certified milk producers. The American Legion, post 493. Bruno's Restaurant. It's become a November football tradition in Homer City. Wildcat playoff football and for the sixth time in eight years a meeting with perennial power Bishop Guilfoyle. And for the first time in the playoffs, the two teams will meet here at Memorial Field. Hello everybody, I'm Mark Burdick. Coming up, we will preview the matchup. You'll hear from both coaches. Ward Hilliard will have the Luther Ford keys to the game and the starting lineups as we set the stage for the District 6 Class A semifinals. Homer Center and Bishop Guilfoyle on a wintry night in Homer City and it's all coming up next right here on WCCS. Every day, businesses open with a determination to make this day better than yesterday. Families work to create a better life. Communities come together to provide better opportunities. At First Commonwealth, we're proud to be part of this journey to a better tomorrow to provide resources that help businesses succeed, to inspire families to save for a brighter financial future, to help support our communities and keep them strong and be better together every day. At IRMC, we have all of the necessary pieces in place to perform complex operations, including highly skilled and specially trained surgeons, their support team of experts, and advanced technology like the Da Vinci Robotic Surgical System. As a result, patients spend less time in the hospital, recover faster, and get treated close to home. So there's no reason to puzzle over where you should get your surgical care. The answer is right here at IRMC. Renda Media says thank you to the Club Savoy Sons of Italy for making tonight's playoff video stream possible for the Greater Homer Center School District community. The Club Savoy Sons of Italy is a great community partner, and they're proud to make tonight's video stream possible for Wildcat fans everywhere. Social memberships are available at the Club Savoy. Upcoming events at the club include music by 13 Stories tomorrow night. DJ Keith Davis, December 11th. Octane appearing December 18th. The public is always welcome at the Club Savoy Sons of Italy, Old Route 119, Homer City. Renda Media and Wildcat fans say thank you to the following clubs and organizations for their outstanding community support and for making tonight's playoff video stream possible. The Grayston Coral Sportsman's Club, established in 1954 on Neal Road in Grayston. The Homer City Area Athletics Booster Club, serving Homer Center's youth since 1958. And by the Club Savoy Sons of Italy, Old Route 119 South in Homer City. Thank you for your community support. Dan in a van hasn't returned your call? Chuck in a truck can't get there for two months? Stop dealing with fly-by-nighters and call a company that's fully capable for all your plumbing and heating needs. Joyce Plumbing, Heating, and Air Conditioning Incorporated. Joyce Plumbing, Heating, and Air Conditioning Incorporated is on call 24-7, 365 days a year. Visit us at JoycePlumbing.com. That's JoycePlumbing.com. Joyce Plumbing, Heating, and Air Conditioning Incorporated. The best place in town to take a leak. PA 042115. Smith, Lewis, Chess, and Company are certified public accountants that provide close personal attention to their clients with every client relationship viewed as a partnership. You will receive assurance from the Smith, Lewis, Chess, and Company that their credibility comes from years of advanced training, technical experience, and financial expertise. The Smith, Lewis, Chess, and Company is located on 1776 Warren Road, Indiana, a company built on character, integrity, and with a belief in strong relationships. 
from Memorial Field in Homer City tonight, the District 6 Class A semifinals. He is Ward Hilliard. If you're watching the video stream, I'm Mark Burdick as we get set for the semifinals, which also happens to be the first round of the state playoffs, the way Class A works. It's a field of 16 teams remaining across the Commonwealth. And if it's football in November, it's Homer Center and Bishop Guilfoyle <laughs> in District 6. Am I right, Ward Hilliard? The see, see, sixth see. time in eight years the two, these two teams are meeting. That's a real credit, I, I think, written to the Homer Center program. I mean, I think back in August, uh, the coaching staff probably got together and knew if they're going anywhere this year, they're going to have to go through Bishop Guilfoyle, and here we are. So they knew it, we knew it, and we're going to get at it here tonight. The Marauders are 7-4. and four. Of course, they play in the Laurel Highlands Conference against uh, Double A, Triple A, even a Quad A school in Johnstown opening week of the season. They whipped them pretty good, 49 to six. I don't think anybody realized Johnstown would go on to be 0 and 10, but uh, it really prepares them for the playoffs with the schedule they play uh, you know, as a private school with a lot on the roster. Last week, their 38 to eight victory over Purchase Line was the first Class A team they played all season. Yeah, and uh, again, you're right. They play an up schedule. They're very good. They're very deep. They have a lot of talent. The thing about it is Homer Center, when they match up, they can give them a battle. There's been games that Homer's been beaten pretty badly, but when they're even talent-wise, they're very close to being even. The Wildcats managed to get under their skin a little bit and uh, knocked them off a couple times, as a matter of fact, didn't they? Glendale last week, Homer Center knocked them out of the playoffs 34 to 15 a sluggish start for homer center but they responded with two strong quarters in the second and third yeah they got uh, they finally got their running game going in that second half and it pretty much wore down glendale uh, a great effort by glendale i gotta give them credit i didn't think that would be that much of a game in the first half they gave homer everything they could want team's pretty resilient the wildcats are hopefully they found that running game mark they kind of struggled coming into that uh, glendale game toward the end of the season with uh, the running attack, but it seemed to pick up much, especially in the second half. Two 100-yard rushers last week for Homer Center uh, as Landon Hill finished with two touchdowns, 113 yards on 15 carries, and senior Colin Troop with 109 yards on 12 carries kind of took us back to the Jesse Lee Boston McCracken days in 2017 when Homer Center not only beat Bishop Guilfoy ending the 59-game winning streak, they advanced all, all the way to the state championship game. Yeah, and, and uh, they had Mike Newhouse a few years prior to that doing the same thing, and that's probably what we're going to have to have happen tonight again, using that battering ram uh, in, in either case, both in Landon Hill and Colin Troop, if we can get them into that second level. Uh, it could be an interesting game. Tonight is just the eighth all-time meeting between the two schools. Guilfoyle holds a 4-3 edge. Uh, last time Bishop Guilfoyle, the only other time Bishop Guilfoyle's been to the friendly confines here at the corner of Lincoln and Harrison, 1969. And in 1969, they won that football game. Ron Coleman's first season at Homer Center. Uh, and uh, Guilfoyle came out on top 21 to nothing. In 1968, an undefeated Tom Duffalo team went on the natural surface at Mansion Park. As I talked to longtime assistant Gene Raymond, who played on that undefeated 68 yep. team, also John Slemmer helped me with a little bit of background. That was a 14 to 6 victory. And then a long gap. But once they started playing again in 2013, Homer Center won the District 6 title 22 to 12 in the snow. We have cold temperatures tonight, but no snow, but the night's early. And then in 2016, Guilfoyle, when they win, they win big. 52 to 6 in the D6 championship game. 2017, Guilfoyle came to Mansion Park, their home stadium. 59 game winning streak, back to back to back state championships. And Homer Center shocked the world in what I consider to be one of the greatest upsets, if not the greatest upset in PIAA history, 20 to 14. 2018, 42 to nothing over Homer Center in the District 6 quarterfinals. And then last year in the championship game, Guilfoyle got off to that early start. Homer Center made mistakes. And as I mentioned, when they win, they win big. 48-13 last week, or last year, I should say. 
So here we are back again. <laughs> yeah, and it, you know, it's a matter of Homer can't reload like Gilfoyle can. And that, that so talent might come and go, but they're pretty consistent, Gilfoyle is, and that's what makes it so difficult. These these private public schools do not have the ability to go out and grab kids and fill gaps. They gotta build from within, and that's what makes it so amazing that the Wildcats were able to knock them off twice. Uh, and I think the beauty of that second game, Mark, is the fact that uh, you, you, they got us in a bad weather night and they beat us. And they thought that was a fluke. It wasn't a fluke because a couple of years later, they knocked them off again on their field. And I think that is very significant. Yeah, I, I think so. Um, Bishop Guilfoyle, six schools represented high schools I'm talking about and big schools. Altoona, Holidaysburg, we're talking 5A and 6A schools where they draw a lot of their players from, and Justin Wheeler will say, their head coach, many of them come up through their elementary system, which is true, but it's a huge elementary system. <laughs> and then there's several towns uh, that uh, uh, participate, but I'm not blaming uh, Justin Wheeler and Guilfoyle, and we, we're both Catholic, so we value Catholic education and the value of any private education. It's the system that I don't think is fair. Matt Felicic called out the system. I kind of applauded Purchase Lines coach for sticking up for his 30 or so young men last week, and I, I told him that. And again, no deference to Bishop Gilfoyle. Uh, they're playing by the rules. Uh, now next year, they're probably going to have to move up into double A because they've had three transfers two years in a row, and that's a PIAA rule that you do have to move up uh, six total transfers at least. So we'll see how that plays out and if those numbers are right. Speaking of Justin Wheeler, I really appreciated his time. Had a nice chat with him. That interview's coming up next on our ITT Indiana Total Therapy pregame show. He's in his 11th season. A record of 114 and 29, not too shabby. <laughs> 798 winning percentage, three and two over Homer Center. Coach Page in his 15th season. They're good friends. They've coached in all-star games. I think there's a mutual respect between Coach Page and Coach Wheeler. He'll follow up as well as we continue on our pregame show. Coach Page, 105 and 61. That, too, not shabby uh, at a public school. He's 2-3 and three against Bishop Guilfoyle. So those interviews are coming up next as we roll on from our S&T Bank broadcast booth, Relationship Banking, one customer at a time, S&T Bank, member FDIC. Back with BG head coach Justin Wheeler when we return on the WCCS Renda Media Wildcat Football Network. Founded in 1954, the Grayston Coral Sportsman's Club has been a hit for young and old. Dues are only $15 and include fishing and use of the rifle range. The Grayston Coral Sportsman's Club prides itself. Founded in 1954, the Grayston Coral Sportsman's Club has been a hit for young and old. Dues are only $15 and include fishing and use of the rifle range. The Grayston Coral Sportsman's Club prides itself in events for kids, including Kids Fishing Day. The annual John Matrisic Singles Pool Tournament will be held coming up Saturday, November 20th. DJ Brian Subco will spin your favorites Thanksgiving Eve starting at 8. And the club's banquet and dance hall is available for weddings and special occasions. The Grayston Coral Sportsman's Club, Neil Road, Grayston. Proud to make tonight's video stream possible for the Homer Center community. Hi Wildcat fans, this is Coach Greg Page. I would like to thank Wildcat Nation for your support, and I especially want to thank the Homer City Area Athletic Booster Club for making tonight's video presentation possible. The Bears Midget Program has provided a foundation for Wildcat football for decades. Through the growth of the boosters, they now impact many of our sports here at Homer Center. From our team, we say thank you Homer City Area Athletic Booster Club for making a big difference in our community since 1958. Dairy cows provide more than 90% of the planet's milk supply. Like a human's fingerprints, no two cow's spots are exactly the same. Farmers measure milk in pounds, not gallons, and it takes 12 pounds of whole milk to get one gallon of ice cream. Regardless of whether you choose skim, 1%, 2%, or whole milk, the calcium and nutrient content is the same. Milk is sometimes called nature's most nearly perfect food. A message from the Allied Milk Producers. You won this year's chili cook-off. Our girls played in the softball finals last spring. You're not just another policyholder to us. We remember your name. Hi, Cheryl. He remembered my name. 
because it's your name. That's simple human sense. Jeff, Mary, Dan, Sarah. Welcome back to a chilly memorial field in our ITT, Indiana Total Therapy pregame show here on WCCS and Renda Digital TV. And as promised, 11th year, Bishop Guilfoyle head coach Justin Wheeler joining us. And coach, I'm pretty sure you weren't even born the last time the Marauders paid a visit to Benaroll Bull Memorial Field because it dates back to 1969. I'm not sure if you knew that. I didn't. Um, yeah, so no, a few years, a few years before I was born, but uh, <laughs> definitely looking forward to it. I want to talk to you about Coach Page, too. You guys are like old friends, sixth meeting since 2013, but I think really what that says, it's a tribute to both programs. Absolutely. I've actually got to know Greg pretty well over the years, not just playing up, but we've coached together in uh, some all-star games. Uh, he is he's a great guy, great coach, great motivator in his program, is you know one of the best in the state, so it is a, it is a testament to both of us running into each other either this week or the district championship week. Uh, you know, uh, looking forward to another great matchup tonight. Justin, your team had to fight through some adversity this year. At one and two, you lose one of your top performers in Hayden Garner to an ACL, but you really have to be proud of your group because they responded winning five out of six in the Laurel Highlands. Tell us about what you had to fight through with this group and how proud you are of them. Yeah, this group is. I, I you know, I've had some great teams, coaches, great guys, and this group is, is one of those groups, and, and they fought through more adversity, I think, than any group we've had. We're losing Hayden, it took kind of the, the wind out of the cells a little bit at the beginning of the year because we, we have had uh, three broken hands, a couple torn labrums. We've had like it's just been, you know, look at our look at our guys who started week one compared to starting this week, and there's a bunch of new guys. So, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm really proud of them. Though. Your thoughts on the wild? Yeah, you know, I do feel like we marry each other pretty well as far as like you know, programs that you may not know some of the names coming into the season, but by the end of the year, you're in the playoffs and people are talking about your kids. You know, here comes a new year and, and they got uh, new running backs, you know, kids, new, new quarterbacks, new receivers, and kids just step up. And, and this year, you know, the quarterback may not run as much, but um, he's a talented kid, throws the ball, strong arm, big kid, and, and uh, you know, uh, we expect you know, him to, to, to definitely uh, try to stretch the field with some deep balls. He seems to throw those real well. And, and um, so we look forward to, you know, we, we think they're going to do that a little bit again, of course. And, um, but, you know, Greg is kind of like me in a lot of ways. It's, you know, you, you want to be able to run the ball. And he's got some big boys up front that uh, really seem uh, to open up the holes uh, for his backs. And, you know, you got two kids that are the two kids combined that have over 2,000 yards. Uh, you know you got some talent at the running back position. Coach, this he appears to be ending. a pretty good matchup in the trenches. The guys up front really have to set the tone, and, and uh, Homer Center's got a you know really really big physical offensive line, and, and our guys have gotten better. The offensive line is the only position that we brought back this year with any experience. So we've been leaning on them, and there's been times when we struggled a little bit this year, and, and uh, we kind of you know re-energized that group a little bit, I think, and they played some really good football in the last four or five weeks. So I'm hoping uh, they, they have a, a good running game. Just and what do you think the keys are for your team? You know, we know what we're getting from Homer Center. We've played them enough. They're always physical kids. They're always tough kids. They're always, they always believe they can win. Coach Page will have them ready. Um, it's at their home field. Uh, you know, their fans have been there a bunch of times. They've always treated me really well. And I've gone scouting there a bunch of years, putting some stuff in the stand, talked to some great people that, uh, at Homer Center, and, and tell you what, they, they love their football, and uh, they, they love to cheer. Um, so it'll be a loud atmosphere. It'll be a great high school football playoff night. But for us, you know, we got to kind of get away from that noise a little bit and focus on focus on us. And uh, we, we have had a, a few penalty issues throughout the year, so we have to make sure to really limit our penalties. And looking back to the history between the two schools, the turnover battle the battle has really mattered. So we need to make sure, um, you know, we, we don't turn the ball over. Of the years that Homer Center was able to beat us, you know, they've kept it close, kept the momentum, and, and been able to, to win in the fourth quarter. And the years we have kind of seemed to uh, beat them, we've kind of started a little bit faster and try to make them come from behind a little bit. So, you know, we want to do the same this year. We're going to try to start fast, you know, try to contain their offense and slow down the run, but try to get some scores on the board early. Other than turnovers and penalties, as you already mentioned, one thing that you need to do defensively to walk away with a victory and uh, something on offense, because I know you can both run and pass. The, the thing definitely, on, you know, for us on defense, um, you know, we still feel like that 
Coach Pace wants to run the ball, and you know we got some big backs, and we rotate them through to keep them fresh. But we got to be able to stop the run. You know, in a game that, that the field might be chewed up, we've got to establish uh, the run game. And I'm sure Coach Pace is going to try to do that with these side zones, these side runs. You know, our guys got to be up to the task to really put them in situations where they have to pass. Our DBs have done a have done a real good job all year to the pass. But if you allow teams to run, you, you kind of play into their hand, and then the play action stuff it really can hurt you. So we got to stop the run for us, number one. And for us, offensively, uh, we got to be balanced. You know, our quarterback has been good, but we have, you know, we, we spread it out. We don't have to keep it. returning as our go-to guys. Quarterback and our cowback and fullback all kind of have the same yardage. We want to, you know, really mix it up with them, running the ball. And also, um, you know, we're a 60-40 run to pass game. we got to make sure that uh, Carson is, is uh, throwing the ball to keep Humber Center uh, off balance. Because Listen to this, the years Michael. we played them, they really like to bring the heat and get guys down in the box to stop our runs. So, this year, um, that we throw the ball a little bit better than we have in the past. Justin, I really appreciate you doing this. First visit to Homer Center in, what, 52 years or so? It should be a yeah, lot of fun. Absolutely, yeah, and I, I appreciate it always. Uh, you know, I appreciate you reaching out, and most, most schools want to just kind of get their, give their stuff and go, but, uh, you know, people that are watching the broadcast know that, uh, you know, what you're going to get is you know, you're, 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 you're promoting both schools as far as high school football in the area, and then it's just a professional uh, job. And I think I said that last year that I was, you know, COVID, I got a chance to watch a bunch of games last year and watch your broadcast. And, uh, whether it's the replays and the commentary and the knowledge that of guy. football that you have and the records that you, you are aware of out that way, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's truly a pretty cool thing. So thanks to, you know, doing like I said last year, doing what you guys do for high school football. And uh, I'll always make time to sit down and talk to you guys about the board game for sure. Head coach Justin Wheeler of the Bishop Gilfoyle Marauders coming back with more. We'll talk to Homer Center head coach Greg Page. We return on the ITT pregame show on the WCCS Wildcat Football Network. With the holidays rapidly approaching, it's time to come home to Indiana's premier jeweler of over 100 years, Luxembourg. This year, add sparkle and smiles to the lives of those you love. Jeff and Kip have packed both stores with a myriad of new and different gifts of all descriptions. Make your holidays sparkle with gifts from Luxembourg. You'll be glad you did. Shop either convenient location, the Indiana Mall, or on Philadelphia Street in the heart of downtown Indiana. Luxembourg's Jewelers. I'm Kip Ray. I'm Jeff Witteson. We are Indiana's Jewelers. The C. Frederick Bouncer Funeral Home and Cremation Services is proud to be a community partner in tonight's game. For over 100 years in western Pennsylvania and since 1968 in Homer City, satisfaction is their top priority and your needs will come first. The new modern funeral home opened in 2004 and is spacious with a beautiful entrance and new carpeting. Large visitation rooms, a chapel, family conference space, children's lounge and more. Proud to serve the greater Homer Center community, the C. Frederick Bouncer Funeral Home and Cremation Services in Homer City. I'm Shannon Lipniscus. Hutton Blues Insurance of Indiana is proud to support high school football. I'm Jay Blues. You can't beat football season. And when it comes to your insurance needs, you won't beat the service we provide at Hutton Blues Insurance. Our family business has served Indiana and the surrounding counties for more than three decades. Once you do business with Hutton Blues Insurance, we'll make you a customer for life. So best of luck area teams from your friends at Hutton Blues Insurance in Indiana. The media says thank you to the Club Savoy Sons of Italy for making tonight's playoff video stream possible for the Greater Homer Center School District community. The Club Savoy Sons of Italy is a great community partner, and they're proud to make tonight's video stream possible for Wildcat fans everywhere. Social memberships are available at the Club Savoy. Upcoming events at the club include music by 13 Stories tomorrow night. DJ Keith Davis, December 11th. Octane appearing December 18th. The public is always welcome at the Club Savoy Sons of Italy, Old Route 119, Homer City. Want to buy a new or pre-owned vehicle? Want to sell your current vehicle? At Luther Ford, you can do it all. Check out the great Luther Ford inventory and drive off today. Or order the exact vehicle you want. Have a trade? Luther Ford will give you a check for your vehicle's high trade-in value. If you want to just sell your current vehicle, Luther Ford can pay you thousands over KBB. At Luther Ford, you can do it all. Luther Ford, Route 119, Homer City.
Welcome back to Memorial Field as our ITT Indiana Total Therapy pregame show continues. It's time for the Wallback Insurance Wal Wildcat Head Coach Greg Page Show. Brought to you, of course, all season long by our friends at Wallback Insurance Main Street in Homer City. And Coach, when you started this 2021 season back on August 27th, it was a blistering 86 degrees and humid. Tonight around kickoff, they're calling for 29 or 30 degrees and uh, but when you're playing the weekend before Thanksgiving a lot of teams would like to be doing that and if you get to Thanksgiving weekend that's better yet you've done that a lot but to get there you have a very formidable opponent standing in your way tonight you'll host them here at Memorial Field the Bishop Guilfoyle Marauders yeah uh, on the weather front I mean you know it's it's typical November typical Western PA so uh, you know everybody's got to deal with that I think once the game gets going uh, your mind starts to focus on that. You don't get quite as cold. I know I don't, and I hope that stays that way uh, through game time. But yeah, we got you know uh, another meeting with an outstanding opponent with Guilfoyle. I mean, every year uh, they're very good, and you know to get where we wanted to go in past years, we've had to go through them. So um, no different this year, and we're up for the challenge. Last week, a sluggish start in your 34-15 victory over the Glendale Vikings. But once you got things going, especially in the middle two quarters, uh, you played pretty good foot, pretty good football. Yeah, you know, it was one of those things. We turned the ball over, gave them a short field, uh, had a penalty that was untimely. And to their credit, they took it in. Um, they did what they had to do. Uh, they have some good athletes. But we responded, and that was the key. We responded right away, got a touchdown, then got another one. Uh, I was hoping we could get one before the half um, to extend that lead. It didn't happen, but Glendale was scrappy. Um, once our guys got over the hump there, I thought we played much better, much more consistent. Let's talk about the Guilfoyle Marauders. I think it starts with their quarterback, Carson Kesey-Wetter. His brother was the quarterback last year. He was used more as a uh, receiver, but boy, he's an excellent athlete. And they mix things up pretty well, maybe even more so than last year. Yeah, they have many good athletes, and I think he's one of the headliners. I mean, he's impressive. Um, you know, he's, he's a good runner. He, he, di he directs our offense well, first off. Uh, he's a good runner himself with a lot of the, the read stuff, and I've been really impressed with how he throws the ball. He throws the ball down the field very well in a sharp manner, and he's also elusive. I mean, you got, you got the whole package. We really haven't seen anybody as a thrower like that other than maybe Schwartz uh, from West Shemokin, but this kid, um, a lot of design runs for him too, which makes him even more dangerous. But So it does start with him, but uh, Rother's a good athlete, very elusive and fast. Abraham's a tough kid. Uh, they get some guys on the outside, too, that they get the ball to, and it's like, um, it's typical Guilfoyle. You have to be ready to defend a lot of guys. And Rother was one of their leading receivers a year ago, and now they use him kind of in a, you know, diversified role, if you will. Yeah, he's right. a running back, but when they need to, they'll split him out, too. Yeah, and sometimes you know that's where they're, where they're going with it. They split him out, and they're still successful. Um, but they'll hit guys like the Janoshek kid and a couple, uh, Riley and, Kafari, I don't know if I'm pronouncing that name right. There's a couple brothers there. Um, so they have weapons. They have athletic kids. I mean, kid, they, they're just good-looking athletic kids. And, um, you know, you have to pay attention to all that. It's, it's kind of tough because they'll, they'll spread you out. Um, you know, a lot of times you know, like, hey, I think they're coming here. But they do it well enough that you have to be able to stop it. Many times you hear the game will be won in the trenches in their 38-8 to victory over Purchase Line. Last week I thought they dominated in the trenches, and I know Purchase Line has a kid or two, you know, out, uh, but uh, you got a uh, next man up, so to speak. But how do you feel you match up in that area? Because I was impressed with their line play from what I saw on video. I was too. I thought they just really took care of business. I mean, they got a couple uh, brawlers on, that, on the, each line. Guys, that, I say that because they're guys that just get after it and stay. Um, it don't just hit you for one second and then, and then let go or, or move on. They're, they're getting after you. Defensively, their line is not quite as big as the offensive side, but they're very quick and very aggressive, and they shed blocks well. And that's, that's a problem. I mean, that's one of those things, especially if the, if the field conditions become a certain way, we really have to lock on to people. And, um, you know, same thing defensively. We've been physical defensively. I think most of the year our front seven has played well. They're going to have they're going to be put to the ultimate test tonight. Many of these guys, even though you have a relatively young team, saw considerable action in the loss last week in the, or last year in the District Six Championship game. How does that experience serve them? And you know, playing at home a bit of a bonus. I think the playing at home um, helps a little more than maybe some of the experience some guys got. We do have some returning starters from that team. 
Um, they were very, very dominant in that game last year. I was disappointed that we, um, you know, didn't represent ourselves better. But they were, they were the much better team. I still think they're very good. Um, I think overall we're a little more consistent, a little more um, diversified offensively. Um, you know, Ben was our hero last year, and we had a couple guys uh, to get the ball out to as wide receivers. But um, you know, he was the focal point. I think this year we've been able to to be a little bit more in the area of spreading things out. You've hurt yourself in the games you've lost with turnovers against Guilfoyle. Of course, that's going to impact any football game, um, penalties as well. But what do you have to do? You know, what's the one thing you, you're thinking, we have to be able to do this tonight against these guys if we want to walk out with a win? Well, to that point, they'll, they'll pounce when you make turnovers. And we've, in times we've lost them, we've committed turnovers at a bad spot in the field or an inopportune time of the game when you need to steal momentum back, that happens and they just take it to another level. Um, honestly, for us, um, against a good defense, uh, we have to be able to run the ball more consistently than we have in recent weeks against other good defenses. I mean, I, I, I don't expect us to, to dominate on the ground game with a lot of these good playoff teams because that's just, uh, at times, that's unrealistic. But we have to be able to be more consistent in that area and put some more drives together. That's head coach Greg Page brought to you by Walbeck Insurance, Main Street, Homer City, online at walbeckinsurance.com. Coach, good luck tonight. We'll talk to you in a warmer broadcast booth. I'll let you know late in the break. Thank you guys very much. Head coach Line Greg judge, Page Tony in our Warnovich. coverage from the check. Memorial Field. Check. 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 Ooh, that's check. Loud. The semifinals field judge, will Steve continue. Yesnowski we have the Luther Ford and the Keys Mark to the game. The starting check. One, two. More. Straight ahead right here on the WCCS Wildcats Football Network. That's pretty loud. You need yours Tonight's now. Officiating crew At IRMC, is the we have Cambria all of the necessary of pieces official. in place to perform complex operations, including highly skilled and specially trained surgeons, their support team of experts, and advanced technology like the Da Vinci Robotic Surgical System. As a result, patients spend less time in the hospital, recover faster, and get treated close to home. So there's no reason to puzzle over where you should get your surgical care. The answer is right here. At IRMC. Happy 76th anniversary, Bruno's Restaurant, and to celebrate the new Bruno's drive through specials or even better, on Tuesdays, enjoy chicken alfredo or parmesan. Wednesdays features Bruno's famous lasagna or spaghetti and meatballs, and Thursday is rigatoni or sausage parmesan. Plus, all three days offer manicotti, too. All meals have large portions that come with salad roll and dessert for only $12. Your dinner choice is an easy one with Bruno's $12 drive through specials. Bruno's Italian Restaurant on the 1100 block of Philadelphia Street in downtown Indiana. Summer is over and thoughts turn to fall and winter. Creville Supply is your source for heating supplies. Creville Supply stocks anthracite and soft coal, as well as wood pellets and split firewood. You can buy it bagged or in bulk. Creville Supply also has salt and driveway stone for potholes and muddy areas. Bring your own truck or have it delivered. Call Creville Supply in Penn Run at 724-254-0403. Dairy cows provide more than 90% of the planet's milk supply. Like a human's fingerprints, no two cow spots are exactly the same. Farmers measure milk in pounds, not gallons, and it takes 12 pounds of whole milk to get one gallon of ice cream. Regardless of whether you choose skim, 1%, 2%, or whole milk, the calcium and nutrient content is the same. Milk is sometimes called nature's most nearly perfect food. A message from the Allied Milk Producers. Smith, Lewis, Chess, and Company are certified public accountants that provide close personal attention to their clients with every client relationship viewed as a partnership. You will receive assurance from the Smith, Lewis, Chess, and Company that their credibility comes from years of advanced training, technical experience, and financial expertise. The Smith, Lewis, Chess, and Company is located on 1776 Warren Road, Indiana, a company built on character, integrity, and with a belief in strong relationships. With you in the booth, we are going to get to the Luther Ford Lincoln keys to the game brought to you by Luther Ford Lincoln. But before I do that, he snuck in like Santa Claus oh. in the middle of the night. Yes, he Our did. statistician with his own sponsor, Jerry Rossi, to <laughs> carve out the stats tonight. Script? No, what? He has a disclaimer. <laughs> Stats are audited by the accounting firm of Bertigan Associates and certified to be accurate within the statistical margin of error. 
<laughs> plus or minus 100 yards. Uh, wow. This is getting you, uh, out you really run a tight this ship there, out Jerry. Out Jerry. Mr. Mester Jerry here, waved, waved everybody out there in radio <laughs> land. Boy, 100 yards. I mean, that's uh, Our spotter in the booth is Dennis Mester, our digital producer, John, Mes- uh, John Smathers. I'm making him your brother. And our executive producer of Wildcat Sports is Michael Burdick back at the ranch at 9th and Philadelphia Streets where it's busy downtown with Light Up Night and the wonderful Life Holiday Parade. Now we'll get to the Luther Ford Keys to the Game delivered by our own Ward Hillier. Well, I thank you very much. And a, a quick apology out to the Hummer City football parents. I did not make the banquets. My fault. I did check my emails. I have a bad habit of not doing that. So I'm, I'm appreciative of the invite. I'll do my best to make her next year if you have me. But back to the uh, Keys to the Game. Line, line, everywhere's line. That's rocking out the scenery blowing my mind and that's what's going to have to happen here tonight homer's line has been a big surprise and a big contributor to the success they've had they have got to play their a game tonight they have got to be able to crack some holes get those big backs into the secondary and they got to control the run game of bishop guilfoyle very important thing the second thing is homer has got to be able to mix and match in other words they got to get uh, we keep saying cole mcanorty has to have a bigger role he has to, again, to have that tonight, Mark, because uh, they're going to key in and stop at that running game. He's going to have to knock down a few short passes, get Michael Kurjosic in the open field, little things like that, just to keep the ball and keep moving. And finally, Coach Wheeler said it, and I agree with him, turnovers, penalties. A game like this, huge, very critical. You know, I've always commented on those motion penalties and drive killers, but they are, and the home run needs to stay away from that. I'm going to give you one more. Okay. Kicking game. Uh, Been an Achilles heel for Homer Center. Bishop Guilfoyle always has been strong. Devin Wyatt kicked last year. He's 35 of 36 in the extra point department. Last year, last week against Purchase Line in the victory, he kicked a 32 and a 46 yard field goal versus uh, Purchase Line. But I think the biggest stat, he averages 53.1 for kickoff. That takes you inside the seven yard line. I think that's going to be a big part of tonight's game. And very well could be. Although I know the games in the past, the kicking game really didn't figure in as much, but it is certainly a weapon that Homer does not possess, and Guilfoyle does. Hey, we want to say hello. This is Ed Sutter, the maintenance director's uh, words, not mine. The old guys from New Florence viewing tonight's game. Jeff Rager, Jim Moore, and Chucky O'Shell. And, yep, I remember your son, Chuck, played at uh, Laurel Valley. I guess you guys did, too, back in the day. Well, thanks for tuning in and having a little Wildcat party out in Ramland in New Florence. Ward Hilliard's going to check the starting lineups when our ITT Indiana Total Therapy pregame show continues. Both teams out on the field. It looks marvelous. I understand it's a little bit soft with the rain from yesterday, but the maintenance crew, this is the eighth home game. Needless to say, that's a school record, eight home games in one year. Ward will set the starting lineups for the Marauders and the Wildcats when we return right here on Renda Digital TV and the WCCS Wildcat Football Network. Dan in a van hasn't returned your call? Chuck in a truck can't get there for two months? Stop dealing with fly-by-nighters and call a company that's fully capable for all your plumbing and heating needs. Joyce Plumbing, Heating, and Air Conditioning Incorporated. Joyce Plumbing, Heating, and Air Conditioning Incorporated is on call 24-7, 365 days a year. Visit us at JoycePlumbing.com. That's JoycePlumbing.com. Joyce Plumbing, Heating, and Air Conditioning Incorporated. The best place in town to take a leak. PA 042115. Hi Wildcat fans, this is Coach Greg Page. I would like to thank Wildcat Nation for your support, and I especially want to thank the Homer City Area Athletic Booster Club for making tonight's video presentation possible. The Bears Midget Program has provided a foundation for Wildcat football for decades. Through the growth of the boosters, they now impact many of our sports here at Homer Center. From our team, we say thank you Homer City Area Athletic Booster Club for making a big difference in our community since 1958.
Time for the starting Double lineups Robert. brought to you Number by Maine's Vincent Chiropractic, Chifari. adjusting today for a better tomorrow. Ward. Number 51, Anthony Ford, Edwards. Bishop Number Gilfoyle, 64, Vincent Chafari will be the uh, left end. He's a senior, Bender. six foot, 175. Left tackle, Cap. Colin Butler, senior, Number six one, 253. Left guard will be P.J. Pollock, a Number senior, six two, two twenty. 220. Ryan Hostler is the center. He's a sophomore, 5'9", 215. Connor Steyer is the right guard, senior, 5'9", 240. And Anthony Edwards is the right tackle. He's a senior, 5'11", 264. Anthony Shafari will be the tight end on the right side. He is a junior, 6'3", 206. In the backfield, quarterback will be Carson Keseyweather. He is a junior, 5'11", 180. Cooper Rother will be the one of the running backs, a junior, 5'11", 180. He'll be joined by Drew Abraham, a junior at 5'11", 195. Bishop and Dominic Yanishak will be the, the wide out or, or wing back. He is a junior, 5'11", 185. For the Wildcats, Noah Henry is the tight end. He's a senior. 6'1", 206, left tackle Isaiah Bentz, junior 6'5", 298, left guard Sage Bernard, senior 5'9", 228, Aiden Bikini, the center, junior 6'1", 233, Vinny Taglietti is the right guard, junior 5'10", 242, Mike Yunt, the right tackle, senior 6'3", 273, Anthony Rowland will be the wide out on the right side, a senior at 5'10", 162 in the backfield. Cole McAnally, the quarterback, junior, 5'10", 174. Colin Troop, the senior, running back, 5'10", 173. But joined by Landon Hill, sophomore at 6'1", 206. Justin Wallback will join them. And Michael Krajosic, the wingback, junior, 5'10", 155. Whew, and we'll shout out to the Anderson brothers out there in Arizona. Ed was on that 68 team, and he'll tell you all about the touchdown he didn't score that he should have scored. Starting lineup is brought to you by Maine's Chiropractic. Adjusting today for a better tomorrow. That's the ITT Indiana Total Therapy pregame show. Bishop Guilfoyle won the toss and deferred. They will uh, be kicking off to Homer Center, and our first quarter will be brought to you by... Friends of Jim Thank you very much. Talked a lot about the offensive line, defensive line situations. Homer Center's offensive line, when they come out, they average 6'1", 255. PG's defensive line, not very big, 6'2", 214, but they're active. And um, offensively, it's a lot tighter because Guilfoyle's offensive line averages 239. Homer Center's defensive line, 249. A lot of seniors starting for Guilfoyle, I noticed as I was reading that, Mark. But that's Over neither center. here nor there, is it? Looking to advance to the District 6 title game for the fifth time in nine years. Guilfoyle's been in the title game eight of the last nine. Incredible. And Devin Wyant has it teed up for Guilfoyle. Approaches the ball, and let's see if he gets it down around the seven. It's coming near sideline, and right at the six-yard line, right sideline picked up by Colin Troop, and he doesn't get to the 20, or maybe he does. Troop on the They're going to say he Wildcats. stepped out of bounds at about the 21-yard line. Yeah, the ball was Troop kicked Abraham. low. Colin had to get over, kind of field it on a hop there. And that broke his uh, momentum upfield. He's able to get 10 yards out of it. So the Wildcats deep in their own From territory. The this line. is going to tell the tale, Mark. We want to see if they're able to move that Bishop Guilfoyle defensive line. 48-13 last year in the championship game. Guilfoyle jumped out quickly. Scoring on the first tough possession, Wildcats really struggled, and they were down 35 to seven at the half. Wildcats hand it off, and the give to Troop, a couple of yards up to the 23-yard line. You see some sod flying early on here, Wart. Yeah, this field is uh, really done well, considering the beating that it has to take here. And we had a pretty hard rain on Thursday, so that might have softened it as well. Number 64, Colin, Colin Butler. On Butler. The He's good. I mentioned him uh, on both sides of the ball. Number two on the team was 64 tackles, 13 for a loss. Second down and eight. Cole's looking to pass. Some confusion, and he's going to roll out and tuck it away and steps out of bounds as he gets up to about the 28 or 29-yard line. I think there was some confusion on that play because I think he was looking for a short out. Yeah, he was, and uh, Michael Krajosik was taken off. 13 is on him. I'm going to watch that matchup to see two. how uh, Guilfoyle wants to defend him. I'm sure that's Cooper Rather, who is, or Rather, who's a running back. He's matched up with Krajosic right now. Third down and two. 
And the give to Troop up the middle, lowers the shoulder, has a first down up to about the 33-yard line. The Good hard nose running from Cullen on the tackle, Sante Bambachi. Ever play some bocce ball, Ward? I love that name. <laughs> Number 56, Sante, Sante a junior, 5'10", 201. Six yeah. and a half sacks to his credit. I've Kent. played First bocce ball. He I makes our list for the top that's names a, of the that's year, a right? Nice, that's a good name, yeah. Sante, Tough I love kid it. inside. Bambachi. I played some bocce ball. My dad was much better. First and 10, Wildcats at their own 34, and Cole looking to pass. Pretty good protection. Going to throw the deep ball down the sideline, and it's overthrown, and a flag coming in. Was Anthony Rowland interfered with? Look at the replay monitor behind us and see what this call's going to be with 10.51 to play. Last week, Bishop Guilfoyle, they allow 18.6 points per game. They held purchase line to 29 yards through three quarters. They, 29 hey, yards. Hey, Coach Wheeler was concerned about penalties, and let's see how they call this. Holding. Guilfoyle. Yeah, they. I believe we'll see if we can catch it on the replay. It looked Holding like the defensive the back kind of put his hand on the shoulder penalty. of Roland, just kind of find him, and uh, that's a 10-yard penalty, so the Wildcats will get the ball. We're going to see the replay right now. From their own 44. Yeah, he grabbed his arm. Double backs and the give to Troop from one side Troop of the 45 right to the other. And uh, five, not much Dominic there. Yanishak. Dominic Yanishak on the, the tackle. One, he Anthony leads Shafari the team the with 65 tackles this season. Give him two Second for Troop who enters the, the game with line. 1,155 yards rushing on 186 carries, a 6.2 average, 16 touchdowns to his credit. This Wildcat offense averages 31.7 points per game, 240 rushing, 111 passing, 351 overall. Sidecar to the left is Troop. They fake it to him, and Cole's going to keep it, and Cole's going to be tackled right uh, after about a one-yard gain. Outside linebacker Drew Abraham shot the gap and hit him first, I believe. And one of the things that I, I didn't comment on that I think could be effective for Homer Paul Center is a fellow by the name of Noah Henry. He plays tight end, but he Third switches sides seven. quite often as a lead blocker. A play like that, Noah could have slipped out into the secondary and been wide open. They came hard against Cole that time, so let's watch for that. Third down and seven. Good shorthanded tackle by Abraham. Let's see what the Wildcats do. Ball right in the center of the field near that big HC logo. Receiver near sides, Michael Krajosik. Looked like Michael maybe jumped early. Throwing over the middle, and it's incomplete. Two receivers in the same spot. Roland cutting in. Noah Henry out, Fourth and it went and between them, the and the Wildcats are now going to have to punt it away. Looked like Krajosik was breaking open on a deep slant. However, the safety is watching, and uh, it's kind of snuck over that way, too. He might have taken that away. So Cole just overthrew the ball. Krajosik, the punter, averages 34.3. Returning the punt, Cooper Rother. And as they come through, a flag coming in. Short punt, shanked it, hits at the 40, and is going to roll out of bounds. We'll see what this penalty is all about. Homer Center fans moaning about something. We're going to step out for 30 seconds. 9.21 to play in a scoreless first quarter. We'll see what the penalty is. BG ball when we return on the WCCS Wildcat Football Network. Goes out of bounds at the... the Homer City American Legion Post 493 is proud to sponsor today's broadcast of the Homer Center Wildcats. The American Legion is proud to be a supporter of our community and amateur athletics. As you enjoy games at Memorial Field in Homer City, remember it was built over 70 years ago as a lasting remembrance of the brave men and women who have proudly served and sacrificed for our great nation. Good luck, Wildcats, from American Legion Post 493 in Homer City. Legal procedure on Homer Center declined. Guilfoyle at their own 40 after a 13-yard punt. And Rother, good running room coming from with the, carry for the, the right uh, by number receiver 10. position, I believe. Anthony yeah, Roland. Up to the 48-yard line, Anthony Roland tackled him, but not before a gain of eight. Yep, he came from that right slot position. And quarterback Carson Kiesewetter handed it. They'll run a lot of those uh, cutbacks. 
you'll see a lot of uh, a lot of those types of plays yeah. tonight, Ward. Kesey Wetter, 95 of 151, 62% for 1,445 yards rushing. They go strong right with a wingman, and they want to, uh, well, it's a read option, and slipping is Kesey the quarterback, Wetter Kesey Wetter, and he's going to lose yardage back to the 43-yard line. Break for the Wildcats. Home field advantage Four comes to play. to play. Carson saying that doesn't happen on <laughs> turf. <laughs> no, it doesn't. I'll make it third down and six. But if the Wildcats needed a little help there. They got to get settled in a little bit. Those jet sweeps, they've always had problems. The the ends of our key and the inside backers have got to step up. That time it didn't happen on that first run. Receiver near side, if you're watching at the bottom of your screen, is Patrick Riley. 12 receptions and a couple of touchdowns to his credit. And it's a play action pass, and Kesey Wetter dancing around, slips and slides and rolls to his right, throws on the run, and it's deflected away at the last moment by Anthony Rowland, and now the Marauders are going to have to punt it away. Nice job by Rowland down there. That ball was well on its way to being completed. Good strong arm by Kesey Wetter. He slipped that. Ed Sutter, the maintenance director, said it looks good, but it's soft. And let's see, as we watch the video screen, yeah, with his left hand, Roland poked it away. Here's the punter, Devin Rewyant, out there. 29 punts, a 43.9 average. Krajosik stands at his own 20. Cold night, 31 degrees at kickoff. Snap kind of floats back, but it's away, and Krajosik allows it to roll at the 20. Far sideline going to be touched down at about the 11 yard line where the Wildcats will take over when we return. 746 to play in the first. We're scoreless on the WCCS Wildcat Football Network. Every day, businesses open with a determination to make this day better than yesterday. Families work to create a better life. Communities come together to provide better opportunities. At First Commonwealth, we're proud to be part of this journey to a better tomorrow, to provide resources that help businesses succeed, to inspire families to save for a brighter financial future, to help support our communities and keep them strong, and be better together every day. From the 11-yard line, they fake the jet. Cole McAnaldi keeps it, and Cole from the 11 to the McAnally 15. Keeps it up the so the Wildcats run uh, a similar play that we saw from BG, and the soggy turf hurt the Marauders quarterback, Carson Kesey-Wetter. Sante it's Bombacci in on the stop from the Marauders. <laughs> <He is happy. laughs> Almost four yeah, yards on that. Good solid uh, first down run. That's what the Cats need to do, keep moving the ball forward. Sidecar to the right is Landon Hill. And Hill takes the handoff and uh, fumbles a football. Guilfoyle picks it up on a hop. And uh, with the football, I think that's uh, Kesey Wetter to the 10 fives touchdown as a flag comes in late too. With 7.05 to play in the first quarter, Hill coughed it up in a convenient hop for Kesey Wetter who takes it in, but let's see what the penalty's all about. That had to be that had to be a block prop, the illegal block from where they threw the flag mark. Boy, that was huge. Again, we you cannot I'll be honest afford with you, that. I think that might be Landon Hill's first fumble of the season. I don't know, but it's not something he has a hack a personal foul. I'm not sure what that Personal foul against the Marauders that, for a blindside block. Blindside block, yeah. We'll take the touchdown off the board. That signal. Well, that's a break for the Cats. Nevertheless, Guilfoyle is set up in Wildcat territory. This is the thing the they had to avoid. Second fumble this year. Yeah, yeah, I, I mean, they, the they, got it. they cannot give the ball to the Guilfoyle on their own. There's four downs to go, 20 yards now. Defense needs to come up with a big play now. Cold night, you're going to see that, especially if you get cracked in the arm part. That kind of goes numb real fast, and the ball comes out. And that's looked like that's what might have happened to Landon. He's not a fumbler, that's for sure. At the Homer Center, 21-yard line. Empty backfield for Kesey Wetter, who recovered the fumble. They fake the jet. He's going to keep it up the middle. Dances through a uh, hole, sidesteps a tackler, and has a first down to the nine-yard line. Keeps it up the middle. Good running room for Kesey Wetter. He's an excellent athlete. Oh, he's he's rushed 657 
for 657 yards on 124 carries, 5.3 average, 14 rushing touchdowns, 11 passing touchdowns. This is a good team, but I don't think this is as strong a Guilford team as we've seen in the past. They had four losses, and some of those games were they were beaten pretty good. So uh, they can be had, but you can't do this. Give them the ball in this kind One of field of the position. One Coach Page talked about, he said normally they pounce on them too. Well, they did for a touchdown, but it was called back on the block. Kesey Wetter going to keep it again, bouncing it outside, and I think he has a clean trip to that right pylon for a touchdown. Carson Kieseywetter from nine yards out right on first to goal, his 15th rushing touchdown, touchdown, and the Marauders lead six to nothing with six and a half minutes to play in the first quarter. They do indeed capitalize on the Wildcat turnover, and this time, no penalties. Well, the left side caved in. They just got, came crashing down on Kieseywetter. He just managed to slip point. around them. There was nobody out there then. Uh, you you got to contain. I mean, that's what I said. You have to play smart football against a team like this. Bryant to kick. Long snappers Colin Campbell, Dominic Janicek the holder and the kick is up, plenty of leg and the kick is good. He's now Ryan's kick is good. 30 the 6 30 remaining in the first quarter. 37 the Marauders 7 for the, the season. That's pretty zero. darn good. Pretty the only good. miss came last week against Purchase Line. Six and a half to play in the first quarter. 7-0 Marauders on the WCCS Wildcat Football Network. We'll try two here, Mike. Four. The Grayston Coral Sportsman's Club has been a hit for young and old. Dues are only fifteen dollars and include fishing and use of the rifle range. The Grayston Coral Sportsman's Club prides itself in events for kids, including kids' fishing, fishing day. Massage, the that. annual John Matrisic Singles Pool Tournament will be held coming up Saturday, November twentieth. DJ Brian Subco will spin your favorites Thanksgiving Eve starting at eight, and the club's banquet and dance hall is available for weddings and special occasions. The Grayston Coral Sportsman's Club, Neil Road, Grayston, proud to make tonight's video stream possible for the Homer Center community. Dan and Devan hasn't returned your call? Chuck and a truck can't get there for two months? Stop dealing with fly-by-nighters and call a company that's fully capable for all your plumbing and heating needs. Joyce Plumbing, Heating, and Air Conditioning Incorporated. Joyce Plumbing, Heating, and Air Conditioning Incorporated is on call 24-7, 365 days a year. Visit us at JoycePlumbing.com. That's JoycePlumbing.com. Joyce Plumbing, Heating, and Air Conditioning Incorporated. The best place in town to take a leak. PA 042115. Back with you, we'll give you the drive summary. After the kickoff, Wyant has it teed up. Seven nothing Marauders, kick right to Troop, but it goes over his head into the end zone. Wisely, I think a good decision by Troop and the Wildcats will start at the 20. Luther Ford drive nice summary off of the, the turnover. Two plays, 21 yards, all 21 belonging to Carson Kieseywetter. His 15th rushing touchdown took all of 35 seconds and they made the Wildcats pay for the fumble. Yeah, and again, it's uh, Hummer needs to respond now. They've got to move the ball. If it's nothing else, get a couple of first downs. Keep Guilfoyle's offense on the sideline. Uh, the, the key now is to keep them close. Coach and Page, a vote of confidence. Landon Hill right back out there. The sophomore has rushed for 790 yards on 137 carries, a 5.8 average, and 10 touchdowns. He's a sidecar to the right of quarterback Cole McAnaldi. And they hand it to Landon. And Landon fights off a tackle. Hard nose running all the way over the 25 up to about the 28-yard line. That's the Landon Hill we've grown accustomed to seeing. Eight yards on that carry and on the tackle for the Bishop Guilfoyle Marauders. It was Carson Kiesewetter who's been Carson active Kiesewetter on both on sides of the ball. The Get into that second level on the defense there, and uh, the he's a load to bring down. That's a good pickup. See if they can get the, the first down on this play here. Cole McAnaldi, 74 of 172, 43%, 1,185 yards, 10 touchdowns, five rushing touchdowns, and he hands it off to Hill with Justin Walbeck leading the charge as a blocker, and he has a first down. Over the 30, he needed two, he got three. And he's so strong, give him four yards to the 32-yard line. Yanishak on the tackle for the Bishop Guilfoyle Marauders. <laughs> and already we're getting some pushing and shoving. I'll tell you, Guilfoyle's reputation. I mean, Coach Wheeler's a good coach. But they talk. And they talk a lot. And uh, that's the kind of stuff that results. A little shoving already. It's only the first quarter. They got to play football. 
Walbeck waiting uh, for the play call. They reposition tight end Noah Henry from left to right. Sidecars left and right, Walbeck to the right, and Cole's looking to pass. Throws underneath, a little curl pattern for Roland, and he has about four yards over the 35 up to about the 37 yard Roland. line. Give him five. And on the tackle, Ryan Hag. Ryan a Hag sophomore, 5'9", 170 pounder. Yards, tied for the team lead the with three interceptions with guess who, Carson Kiesewetter. You know, that, uh, that's that's the kind of stuff we thought, talked about, Mark. Those short pl passes, if, if Anthony breaks a tackle, he's got a first down. That's a win on first down, though, five-yard pickup. Hey, if you're viewing tonight's game or listening, email us at sports at wccs.com. You'll see it scrolling occasionally tonight on the video screen. We'd like to know where you're watching at. Or you can post a comment on the WCCS Facebook page. Toss to Hill, cuts it up, fights, and gets to the 39-yard line, but only a couple on right of yards side. that time. Good defense from the, the Marauders, the Marauders the stop, led by right Vincent Shafari and Shifari, some others. And, so uh, it's going to be a big Sante third down and, play. They give them the 40. Bochi, so a gain of three, third down and two, 4-19 to play. play. Moving third clock in the first the quarter, game. it's 7 nothing Marauders. It gets good push at the initial point of attack, but they didn't c continue that, and that's what allowed the, the pursuit to get to Landon to bring him down. Third down and a deuce, and they give to the deep back hill, dancing around, fighting, and uh, not going to get to that lead chain unless they give Hill's him a very it favorable again. spot. It's going to be at the 41-yard line, maybe slightly over. Good pursuit again. for the team Came wearing purple and white. The white jerseys pursue the football. The now a critical decision for Coach oh, Page. Boy. And <laughs> Coach Page not happy with the spot, I guess. Riverboat gambler he has been. And uh, look for the uh, try to draw him offside play here. Fourth it's, it's, down and a yard. Maybe slightly less than a yard. And the Wildcats line up to go for it with Justin Walbeck joining Hill in the backfield. Cole from the shotgun. And there's a, they did it again. Although I think the Wildcats may be moved. It is illegal procedure on Homer Center. And now they will have to punt it away. Uh, the one the Marauder flinched but didn't come across the neutral zone. Coach Page is livid now. He is letting you side judge have it, but that's not going to help any. It'll be fourth down and there's, a, there's a critical penalty again, although that was uh, intentional by all judgments there that the, the homer has to punt the ball away now. We'll have immediate timeout after this punt just to alert our studio engineer, Michael Birding, our digital producer, John Smathers. 7 nothing Guilfoyle. Too bad for Homer Center. They had something started there. Krajosik to punt it away. Only a 13-yarder his first effort. Jones, the long snapper. Snap a little bit high, they bring pressure. He does get it away, it's all again short. And it's gonna hit at the 44 and roll dead at about the 40-yard line. Ah, uh, for Guilfoyle. 23-yard punt, no return. Media right, timeout on the field. field. 3.08 remaining in the first. From our S&T Bank broadcast booth, 7-0 Bishop quarter, Guilfoyle on an IRMC playoff Seven, sports night Cats on the Renda Media Football Network. Renda Media says thank you to the Club Savoy Sons of Italy for making tonight's playoff video stream possible for the greater Homer Center School District community. The Club Savoy Sons of Italy is a great community partner, and they're proud to make tonight's video stream possible for Wildcat fans everywhere. Social memberships are available at the Club Savoy. Upcoming events at the club include music by 13 Stories tomorrow night. DJ Keith Davis, December 11th. Octane appearing December 18th. The public is always welcome at the Club Savoy Sons of Italy, Old Route 119, Homer City. You won this year's chili cook-off. Our girls played in the softball finals last spring. You're not just another policyholder to us. We remember your name. Hi, Cheryl. He remembered my name. Because it's your name. That's simple human sense. Jeff, Mary, Dan, Sarah. Marauders are going to start at their own 41-yard line. Ward mentioned they lost some games this year. They did indeed. Four of them 
They also lost Hayden Garner, their top player, in week two, and he really wasn't healthy to begin with with an ACL injury. And now a flag on Guilfoyle that I think is going to back them up illegal procedure. So they had to recover from that and make a lot of adjustments. We saw Hayden Garner last year. What a terrific athlete. He's going to be playing on Saturdays next year at Clarion, from what I'm told. They lost back-to-back -back games to Penn Cambria 27 to 14 and 28 to 3 at Richland. And then won five of their next six games with the only loss at Chestnut Ridge 41 to 22. Had an early 10-0 lead over Bedford in week 10, but then lost 28 to 10 and then 38 to 8 last week over Purchase Line, the first Class A team that they played all season. This is a big series for the Wildcat D. They have got to get the ball back. They can't afford to let Gilfoyle drive here. Empty backfield, they bunch a formation to the left, and they give on a jet sweep, and Rother is hit and dropped. Right at the line of scrimmage. And on the tackle the for the Homer Center Wildcats was Noah Henry. No gain on the play. Beautifully the played. Filled that gap that time. The first time that wasn't anybody there. He cut up, filled Noah, filled the gap, popped him, down he went. No gain. That's what the D's got to do. So after the five-yard mark off and no gain, it'll be second down and 15. It'll Homer play. Center, of course, plays in the Heritage Conference. They played against six Class A schools, including Glendale last week. They were a perfect 5-0 and against Class A opponents. Played five Class 2A schools. They were 3-3. Three and three. Hard count, and Casey Wetter going to throw a slant in pass and a bullet to Rother caught at the 45, maybe the 46-yard line. Landon, Landon Hill made the tackle. The It'll set up third down and five. That was a baby. Yeah, down as well executed, 10-yard gain on that on slant there, line. but uh, well covered by Landon Hill. There wasn't much else he could have done. In double-A, Homer Center defeated River Valley, Marion Center, and Northern Cambria. Losses to Cambria Heights, Berlin Brothers Valley. And uh, also Muncie. Muncie. Guess, Muncie and and that was a game everybody doubted. Why are you playing Muncie? Because you're going to be here playing this team. And that, that certainly paid off, I think. Third down, five to go. And Kesey Wetter, pump fake, now throws again. Caught too much cushion there. And it's Rother for a first down to the Wildcat 44-yard line with 137 to play. So they overcome second down and 15 with back-to-back passes. And well done as we look at the replay in our broadcast booth, our s and Bank broadcast booth, line. and they gave him five yards, far too much. You're gonna complete that every time. Yeah, Michael kind of got a little antsy. He was afraid he was gonna get past him for a deep pass, which was the p early pump. Uh, and uh, after he he made the pump fake, the, just, the player just turned and was wide open. So. From the Wildcat, 44. Motion man is Rother again, right toward us if you're viewing it. And the give up the middle. And no, it's Kesey Wetter keeping it down the right sideline to the 30 to the 20. Makes a move, gets by a defender, 10-5 touchdown. Carson Kesey Wetter from 44 right yards side. out. Excellent he is in ball for fake. Touchdown. And he scores again his second of the night from 44 yards. And it's 13-0 Marauders with 61 seconds left in the first quarter. Not real good tackling for Homer Center there either. That's player injured it's a wildcat down in the end zone no it's terrible tackling looks like uh Krujosic. well that would be a big blow Huge. for homer center so 101 remaining we'll take an injury timeout the marauders drive 59 yards and they jump out in front again 13 to nothing over the homer center wildcats coming back to memorial field injury timeout on the field 13 nothing marauders on an irmc playoff sports night on the WCCS Renda Digital TV Football Network. Do you need tires soon? Then go to firstclassmobiletire.com and put in the make and model of your vehicle. Then shop tires and set up a time that is best for you. Now just sit back and relax while First Class Mobile Tire comes to your home or office. While you sit on the couch, get some stuff done around the house, or continue your workday routine, First Class Mobile Tire will come to you with a convenient and top-notch professional tire service. Schedule a time that's best for you at firstclassmobiletire.com. The Smith, Lewis, Chess and Company are certified public accountants that provide close personal attention to their clients with every client relationship viewed as a partnership. 
you will receive assurance from the Smith, Lewis, Chess, and Company that their credibility comes from years of advanced training, technical experience, and financial expertise. The Smith, Lewis, Chess, and Company is located on 1776 Warren Road, Indiana, a company built on character, integrity, and with a belief in strong relationships. Michael Krajosik off the field under his own power. Devin Wyant to attempt the extra point for the Marauders. Out of the hold of Dom Janoshek. Snap a bit high, but put down, and the kick is just over the bar. Did it catch the left upright? It did. Kick is good. Wyant's kick is up and good. So it's 14 nothing Marauders. We'll break again. Wildcats need to get something going on this next drive if they want to uh, stay in this football game. They're down by two touchdowns already to the perennial powerhouse Bishop Guilfoyle Marauders coming back with a kickoff after this 30-second break on the WCCS Wildcat Football Network. Building or remodeling? Save yourself some steps and march to PenningtonSpecialty.com. Randy George at Pennington Specialty takes pride in every job, and you'll see that when you march into PenningtonSpecialty.com. Contact Randy George at Pennington Specialty for a free quote. If you're talking construction of any kind, you should be talking to Randy George at Pennington Specialty. One visit to PenningtonSpecialty.com, and you'll see why people have been marching to Pennington Specialty for years. Randy George is also a grad of Homer Center and is Wildcat proud and wishes the team the best of luck on their march to a district championship. Drive summary for the Marauders. Four plays, 59 yards, took 207. Ward the five-yard penalty. Whether they were truly going to go for it or not for Homer Center, I guess we'll never know. But they Yeah, that, that whole sequence just kind of blew up in there. That was terrible tackling, though, and I'm, I'm really concerned. End over end kick. Hill watches it bounce at the five and basically roll dead quickly and picks it up and Still returns it over the 20 and fights for extra yardage on second effort to the 26-yard line. On the Patrick tackle Riley on the, on the Marauder the kick coverage team is Patrick Riley. So with 54 seconds left the in the quarter, the Wildcats the will start line. at their own 26. Almost imperative that they get something going. Uh, here. Absolutely, they've got at least, uh, as we said the last time, you know, you can, this is too too much of a gap. 14 points. Uh, Homer cannot afford to fall any further behind. Krajosi back in the lineup, and he is their one big play threat right now on the field. Homer center from their own 26. Cole McAnally, rare time under center. Aiden Bikina. Turns, hands it off to Colin Troop, and Troop, Troop up to the about middle. the 35-yard line for seven yards or so. Just see where they put it down. That just Janice quickens Jack. the pace a little on your and offensive blocking by going Marauders. right off center there. It, it's, there's not a read option. It's just a pop. You know, you're going Second through the two hole. You're going. <laughs> Defensive end P.J. Pollock on the stop, a senior 6'2", 220, fourth on the team with 57 tackles, 14 Tackles for a loss for Pollock leads the team. Again under center, different look for Homer Center, and Cole turns, hands to Troop. First down yardage up to the 37-yard line. Colin Butler on the stop for Colin the Butler and Pollock again combining, and it will it's be a, a first down for, for Homer Center very quickly. Down. I want to say we want to thank our video stream sponsors, the Club Savoy, Sons of Italy, and the Grayston Coral Sportsman's Club and also the Homer City Area Athletic Booster Club as the first quarter comes to a close. And B Bishop Guilfoyle did pounce on a Wildcat mistake and play. then scored again. The and they lead 14 to nothing. Disappointing start zero. for the home team tonight in the District 6 semifinals on an IRMC playoff sports night on the WCCS Wildcat Football Network.
At IRMC, we have all of the necessary pieces in place to perform complex operations, including highly skilled and specially trained surgeons, their support team of experts, and advanced technology like the Da Vinci Robotic Surgical System. As a result, patients spend less time in the hospital, recover faster, and get treated close to home. So, there's no reason to puzzle over where you should get your surgical care. The answer is right here at IRMC. Back with you, first play of the second quarter. Back to the shotgun for Cole McAnally, and he hands it off to Troop. Through a hole, hurdles over a would-be tackler up and as he gets to the 46-yard right line. But that'll be a gain of eight yards for Troop. Some good Shafari running for Colin. Shafari being credited with the tackle for the second Bishop Guilfoyle Marauders. Okay. Want to say hello to some guys listening at the Grayston Coral Sportsman Club, Robert Metella, Julie Flowers. Going to tell you a story about Julie and the wonderful Thanksgiving event they have coming up for some uh, people that may need help at Thanksgiving. Steve Timko, Peggy and Jason Cribbs, Lee Brown, Brian and Twyla Hess. Thanks for listening. Have a good time down there at the GC Sportsman Club. And thank you for helping to bring fans around the world, we could say. The Tonight's broadcast, Troop the up the middle for a first down. He needed to, that's what and he got. Yonkers Dominic Janoshek on down. the tackle for the Marauders. I mentioned their leading tackler. For last year, the look at that game, it was all BG really from the beginning. Homer Center lost five starters, returning six this year. BG returned five starters offensively, but then they lost Hayden Garner, their top performer early on. Homer Center lost Schmidt, their top two receivers, Drew Kaufman and Travis Mock. Jet sweep, and Krajosic comes it comes this way, looks fine, has the corner to the 45, to the 40, and out of bounds he goes. As Carson Kiesewetter chased him out of bounds at the Guilfoyle 37-yard line, but another set of downs Make for Homer Center. On the plane and up for a nice run. Down. We haven't seen that work much at all this year. We've been pretty critical of it. Nice little dip move by... Uh, Michael to get to the outside, and the Wildcats are in four down territory now. They got to do something with that. They got to show Guilfoyle they can drive the field and score. On the defensive side of the ball, Bishop Guilfoyle lost eight starters from their championship team from a year ago, plus Hayden Garner. Homer Center, seven. So they went out and discovered a few more. Toss <laughs> left. Troop sidesteps Yanishek and Approaches the 30-yard line near the Wildcat bench and has close to seven yards more on the tackle for the Marauders cornerback, Ryan Hag. And they're going to put the football down at the 30. So it'll be second down at about three. Going directly from center, kind of messed up Guilfoyle's timing a little on defense. And it's since then, Homer's been able to move the ball a little more on the ground, and that is encouraging. H back, Henry to the left, give to Troop, but he stood up this time. I think that might be Abraham. Let's see when they unpile. Troop with the carry, uh, P.J. Pollock. About 57 it was, P.J. Pollock. No movement at all that time Can't on that right yard. side. They're going to give him a yard to the 29-yard line. And not so fast, Mr. Hilliard, on the went out and got some replacements. Every starter, I checked, first time in, since 2013 when these two teams have played, Every starter for BG was on the roster last year. Well, isn't that lovely? And they, they don't uh, bother going out and uh, getting recruits for the next year then. <laughs> Third down and yeah, two. Yeah, they're, they're a good program. <laughs> for Homer Center. And Hill in there, gets the handoff, and has a first down Hill, the to the Marauder 26-yard line. Good hard nose running for the 206-pound sophomore. As we said, it's not so much the private school. We, we have no problem. If you tuned in late, we're both Catholic. And uh, <laughs> it's just the way the PIAA treats private schools that we have a problem with. But we don't get to make those calls. They will be double A next year. I believe they had six transfers, uh, three, two years in a row, which forces you to move up. H back is Henry again. And Cole McAnaldi hands it off to Hill. Hill drags a tackler to the 20-yard line. 
And good yardage again. Pollock again on the stop for the Bishop Guilfoyle Marauders. It'll be second down and about four to go. 8.45, churning clock here in the second quarter. From our S&T Bank broadcast booth, relationship banking one customer at a time. 14-0 Marauders. Juni Adavelli out to an early lead. Right, Jerry? 14-0. Also 14-0 over Portage up in Alexandria, Pennsylvania. Second down and four, and Cole McAnaldi hands it off to Hill. Hill follows that big offensive line inside the 15, and the Wildcats. Over the right side. Guilfoyle saying he fumbled the football. I don't see any signal from the, the officials. I think he was down. It'll be first and 10 for Homer Center at about the 12 yard line. They're getting a little confident now, aren't they? And they gotta keep it up. The line's getting a, a, be enough of a push now that you can get Landon and Colin into that secondary. Much better crowd on hand tonight, even with the cold temperatures. Yeah, they, they came out. Guilfoyle brought a nice crowd also. Wanna say hello to Mike Gonchar, purchase line guy watching the game. There's a handoff to Hill and the Guilfoyle Marauders have him Double teamed as he approaches the 10 yard line. Carson Kieseywetter along with Colin Butler on the tackle. Gain of maybe two, second down. Gain of two, it'll be second down and eight. The Wildcats can pick up a first down at the Bishop Guilfoyle two yard line. Record eighth home game tonight for Homer Center. Second down, eight. Hill in the backfield, and Cole wants to keep it, and Cole's going to be dropped. Read option, he kept it, and read it wrong. And on the tackle, Sante Bambachi on the, Bambachi on uh, the stop, tackle for the Marauders. They got a little quick pass to the flat that, that they've used off of that formation, and it, it's something maybe, maybe that they can uh, Third down and nine for the use line. right now. Defense is really collapsing in on that. Lost a yard back to the 11. I mentioned the eighth home game. They're four and three at home. This year, we've seen so much winning. First time they've lost three home games since 2011. Receiver to the right is Michael Krajosik. And they're going to double team him out there? Or no, there's going to be a timeout on the timeout. field. Timeout called by Bishop Guilfoyle. 6.44 to play in the first With half. It's first Bishop Guilfoyle 14 and Guilfoyle the Homer 14, Center Wildcats, Wildcats nothing. Zero. Big play when we return on the WCCS Wildcat Football Network. The Homer City American Legion Post 493 is proud to sponsor today's broadcast of the Homer Center Wildcats. The American Legion is proud to be a supporter of our community and amateur athletics. As you enjoy games at Memorial Field in Homer City, remember it was built over 70 years ago as a lasting remembrance of the brave men and women who have proudly served and sacrificed for our great nation. Good luck, Wildcats, from American Legion Post 493 in Homer City. The engineering firm of Young & Associates is proud to sponsor high school athletics. With offices in Indiana, Catanning, and Johnstown, Young & Associates is a full-service engineering, surveying, and design firm for private, public, and municipal entities, covering western Pennsylvania, delivering solutions in a timely and cost-competitive manner. To see how they can be of service to you, go online to youngandassociates.com. But they give him the football coming near side, and they string it out. They force him out of bounds. That might be a flag on Guilfoyle, but I don't see any laundry Guilfoyle flying. The so side. they're going to say he just carried him out of bounds. Anthony and uh, no harm, no foul. So it's going to be they now fourth down, fourth down and seven. from about the Guilfoyle nine-yard line. I couldn't see from our angle who forced him out of bounds. I couldn't get we'll that see. I don't know if we're not going to have a replay. Number one, they're saying. Uh, Number one, that is uh, Shafari. Shafari, Anthony Shafari. So Wildcats do or die here on this play from the nine yard line. Zenizak, receiver to the right boundary. Slot receivers, Krajosik to the right near side is Roland. And Cole Krajosik. Going to boot to his right with pressure coming up the middle. Throws for the back of the end zone. Incomplete. 
Intended receiver Krajosic and pressure the uh, give credit to the Marauders the with pressure up the middle, the led we'll the by the aforementioned the Anthony Safari. I thought uh, they were setting that up to be a screen pass as hard as that rush came in, but uh, apparently they were looking to throw deep into the end zone. I thought they had Anthony Rowland one on one over on the left side, Mark, and they were going to try to isolate and go that way. But, not the call, so Homer, uh, nice drive, nothing to show for it. Need to have a three and out right now on the Marauders. Yeah, drive started at the 26 of Homer Center. They took it to the nine. Marauders start at their own nine. Empty backfield, Casey Wetter, who's been dynamic early on in this football game, sends Rother in motion, and he gives it to him on the jet sweep, and he's hit and dropped for a loss. Let's see, from our angle, was that Riley Clevenger who got him? I think so. We're in the lower section of the press box. Our camera upstairs is a higher angle, so you might say, she's Ward and Mark. That was easy to see Riley made that tackle (laughs) off. On the lower level, not as easy to see. No Henry as well. Nice job, though. About a four-yard loss on that play, and that uh, makes it a lot of I thought Keezy Wetter, you got to watch him. He's so elusive, and he's got great speed. You know, the Cats have got to contain him. From their own four-yard line, they shift, and they go with a pistol back behind Keezy Wetter, and they're going to give it to that back, and uh, some decent running room out over the 10-yard line to the 12. Let's see if that was Rother in there, and it was. Cooper Rother, Rother with the 676 carries. yards rushing so on 113 seven, carries the on the tackle Landon Hill for Homer Center. So so low snap, almost Casey Winter almost downed himself down there, but was able to come up with the ball and make the handoff. Big down here for the Wildcats. Tonight's Cats. game being video streamed on both the WCCS Facebook page and the WCCS YouTube channel. You can find it either spot. Don't forget, text, email us. Where you're watching, sports at WCCSradio.com or post a comment on our Facebook page. Out pattern, absolutely wide open is Riley at the 18. First down, he goes down at the 25. Is Wallbeck dropped him before. Dropped him. We'll get a uh, replay. Far too much cushion again as we look at it. For a and uh, Casey Wetter, good strong arm. Ten. Nobody within seven yards of him when he hauled that in. Michael's biting on the on the streaks, and uh, he's going back, which is what guys generally do with him. They're take he's taking steps back. After giving up a big cushion, that's an easy out pattern. You got to throw that, and that's what they did. So they overcome the second and long for the second time in this game, and they're now out at their own 26 yard line. 25 yard line, call it. And a quick handoff. No, Kesey Wetter, I think, kept that football, and the Wildcats defense it nicely. Might gain a yard or two, but not much. That Wildcat possession, by the way, they kept it 14 plays, drove 63 yards, six minutes and 20 seconds, five first downs, and they come up short. Just uh, didn't on the have tackle, Vinny Taglietti injured. Uh, we have an injured Marauder who's play. pounding his. He's on his stomach and he's pounding his hand on the turf. I think that's center Ryan Hostler, a sophomore. So there's an injury timeout on the field with 4.13 to play in the first half. Indiana Regional Medical Center playoff sports night continues from Memorial Field with the score. Bishop Guilfoyle 14 and the Homer Center Wildcats nothing on the WCCS Renda Digital TV football network. Mitsubishi has made heating and cooling your home very efficient. With Mitsubishi's Zone Comfort Hyper Heating System, you no longer need separate heating and cooling systems. Contact Davis Brothers Heating and Air Conditioning, Indiana. A Mitsubishi Diamond Preferred Contractor, PA License Number 2526. Founded in 1954, the Grayston Coral Sportsman's Club has been a hit for young and old. Dues are only $15 and include fishing and use of the rifle range. The Grayston Coral Sportsman's Club prides itself in events for kids, including Kids Fishing Day. The annual John Matrisic Singles Pool Tournament will be held coming up Saturday, November 20th. DJ Brian Supko will spin your favorites Thanksgiving Eve starting at 8. And the club's banquet and dance hall is available for weddings and special occasions. The Grayston Coral Sportsman's Club, Neil Road, Grayston. Proud to make tonight's video stream possible for the Homer Center community. Smith, Lewis, Chess, and Company are certified public accountants that provide close personal attention to their clients with every client relationship viewed as a partnership. 
you will receive assurance from the Smith Lewis Chess and Company that their credibility comes from years of advanced training, technical experience, and financial expertise. The Smith Lewis Chess and Company is located on 1776 Warren Road, Indiana, a company built on character, integrity, and with a belief in strong relationships. Tell in Bloomsburg, Pennsylvania, on their way to the New York City for the Thanksgiving Day Parade. Nothing like getting there early, guys. <laughs> Go Cats make 13 our lucky number. Yeah, the Wildcats are 12 and 0 all time here at Memorial. Well, they Field. got I a new center. The Let's see if there's an exchange problem here. It's Wildcats. Oh, he yeah. already snapped the ball. <laughs> I would say there's a problem. Yeah, they, nobody was ready for that, including Let's see who this new center is in the game. Ball start on the Marauders. That'll be a five 61, yard I believe, which is uh, 55. I think no. it's the kid out there. Oh. I think it's 55. Yeah, 55. You're right. Joey Hofer, a sophomore, 5'11", 180. So he replaces the injured Ryan Hostler, a sophomore. They're taking a the timeout, Mark. Try to get organized now. Timeout called by Bishop Gilfoyle. Or is We're, it? Well, what? Uh, the illegal procedure. Yeah, they're going to mark it off. No timeout. We'll keep it here. Hey, the I mentioned the community Five dinner. Share your blessings. We'll make it second down Thanksgiving Day, 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. at the Coral Grayston Fire Hall. CDC guidelines will be followed. Meats will be picked or meals can be picked up at the fire hall via drive-through or deliveries available. Call Julie Flowers 724-549-1690. It's an absolutely wonderful thing they do. It's completely free. You can place your order in advance against Julie Flowers, 724-549-1690. We'll try to repeat that. Thank you, Coral Grayston Firemen, Grayston Coral Sportsman Club, everybody involved. And the give to Rother, spinning for some yardage Rother over the 30, the up to about the 32-yard line where the it'll set Cats. up third down and short. Mason Bell, inside backer for Homer Center, number two on the team with 57 tackles, makes that tackle. Yeah, nice lead block there. And that I'm watching the screen. That was a game of about 10 yards on the play. Third down and four. Right, so the football at the 32, favoring the left hash. They operate left to right as we look out of our S&T Bank broadcast booth. Relationship banking, one customer at a time. Patrick Riley and Cooper Rother, receivers to the left. And there's a pass. And again, Rother has it. He's to midfield. He's to the Wildcat 49. And I think that time Landon Hill Casey slipped in the coverage. We'll see if we get a replay. And there it is. Rowland. In our uh, broadcast booth He's on the video the side, we're looking at a replay courtesy of John Smathers. The from the and line. can't see that. Oh, there's the yeah, slip. He slipped twice. As a but uh, he was still giving a pretty good cushion. 18-yard pass play. Football right at midfield. You'd think, uh, you know, maybe they're you could bait the Kurt, you know, Casey Wider to throw that out there uh, and jump the route, but uh, so far Homer's well off. 2.20 to play, Rother in motion, right to left, and good protection. Now breaks down, Taglietti giving chase, and a hit, and a pass downfield, and it's intercepted or not, let's see, yeah, it's intercepted by Homer Center, and Let's see. Now Bishop Guilfoyle saying they have the ball. Yeah, holy moly, he stole the ball. Let's see if we have a replay of this outstanding play as Kesey Wetter rolled to his right. It's going to be a 30-yard gain as it turns out. And let's see if we can see what happened here as he was popped by Clevenger as he delivered the ball. And it was Kurjosik who had it. And then was it Janaszak? that stole it away from him. Wow. Yeah, he took it right off him. Kudrosik reached up for it, and the Anishek was wise enough to grab the ball and was able to pull it away. And boy, this is this makes this really a critical stop here. Casey Wetter takes the shotgun snap, hands it off to Rother. Rother, Bell, among others, have him. But he has some yardage down to about the 17-yard line. For the Wildcats. Approaching the 130 mark in eight. this first half, 14 nothing Marauders. Nothing going well for the Wildcats right now. They need a break of some type. Yanishak, 5'11", 185 against Krajosik. They list him at 5'10". I'm not sure about that 5'10". I'm not 10. So sure, but... I'm not sure about the other 5'10", either. They bunch three receivers to the left. Twins near side, empty backfield on second down and seven. Rother in motion right to left. They fake it to him. Kesey Wetter keeps it up the middle. 
And the Wildcats, he went her up the as middle. he gets inside the 15, down near the 13-yard line. And off the bottom of the pile, Walbeck Isaiah and Pitt Isaiah and Cupcake Betts in on the stop there for the inside Wildcats. of a minute. Krajosik, or I'm sorry, Walbeck leads the team 67 and a half tackles. What a career he's had. Yeah, and he really Wondering out loud now if he could be the all-time leading tackler being a four-year starter. Kesey Wetter throws. Boy, he throws it on a rope, and he has a receiver inside the 10 for a first down. Kesey Wetter completed to Rother. Rother, they use him Landon in a variety of ways. Landon pass. Hill. Ward, it may be the strongest arm we've Rothers. seen this year. Inside yeah, he puts it there, line. and he's very accurate. And you're running the safe patterns, Mark. Time out. Bishop Time out called by Bishop Guilfoyle. We'll pause for 30 seconds with 33 seconds left in the first half. Guilfoyle threatening to blow it open at the half. It's 14 to nothing. They'll have a first and goal at the Wildcat 8 when we return on an IRMC playoff sports night right here on the WCCS Renda Digital TV Football Network. The C. Frederick Bouncer Funeral Home and Cremation Services is proud to be a community partner in tonight's game. For over 100 years in western Pennsylvania and since 1968 in Homer City, satisfaction is their top priority and your needs will come first. The new modern funeral home opened in 2004 and is spacious with a beautiful entrance and new carpeting. Large visitation rooms, a chapel, family conference space, children's lounge and more. Proud to serve the greater Homer Center community, the C. Frederick Bouncer Funeral Home and Cremation Services in Homer City. Hello, got some comments coming in on the sports email. Let us know where you're watching sports at WCCSradio.com or post a comment on our Facebook page. John Plaucha, Homer Center class or Homer City class of 63, watching from Powhatan, Virginia. Hope I got that right, John. Carol Austin watching tonight's game in Las Vegas, Nevada. Hello, Pennsylvania. And John Plaucha watching the game from Powhatan, Virginia. Brother Rob, let me know about the game and... Well, we need to get things turned around here if you're a Wildcat fan. They reposition tight end Eckenrode to the left, and Kesey Wetter takes the snap, comes near side, and he's going to gain a yard or so. Pretty good tackle Kesey there. Let's see on the near side, Michael Krajosik. Down to 22 seconds, and it looks like we're going to have another Gilfoyle timeout. Maybe a yard. So we'll pause yep. for 30 timeout seconds on an Indiana Regional Medical Center playoff sports night. Yes, let us know where you're watching, especially you out of staters. It's always great to see where fans are watching. 14 0 Marauders. It's going to be second down and goal at the Wildcat 7 when we return on the Renda Digital TV and WCCS Wildcat Football Network. Dan in a van hasn't returned your call? Chuck in a truck can't get there for two months? Stop dealing with fly-by-nighters and call a company that's fully capable for all your plumbing and heating needs. Joyce Plumbing, Heating, and Air Conditioning Incorporated. Joyce Plumbing, Heating, and Air Conditioning Incorporated is on call 24-7, 365 days a year. Visit us at JoycePlumbing.com. That's JoycePlumbing.com. Joyce Plumbing, Heating, and Air Conditioning Incorporated. The best place in town to take a leak. PA 042115. Watching uh, the game tonight, and we thank him for being such an outstanding community partner, bringing the video stream to you tonight. Fred Bowser. Hey, Fred, you're a grad of Homer Center. Used to teach. Not many people know that Fred was a teacher early on. Uh, he's not a Homer grad. No, no not a Homer Marion Center. Marion, Marion Center, yeah. Uh, that's right, don't, that's right. But he did teach, right? <laughs> he, oh, yeah, he did he teach at Homer. Kesey Wetter with an empty backfield. Trip receivers to the short side of the field. Kesey Wetter throwing slant in pattern, caught touchdown. That was easy. Rother on the reception. His third touchdown reception of the season. And he was open on a slant in. And it's 20 to nothing, Guilfoyle with 18 seconds left here in the first half. Ouch, that hurts. Yeah, the uh, D backs are just way too tentative, and, and you got to take chances. You know, they're burning you on those little turn ins and turn outs, and uh, just another great job. We had a perfect view of that. Simple slant, he was wide open. 
easy completion. Yanishek, the holder. Devin Bryan, outstanding kicker. Trying to go three for three. Snap is down, kick is up, kick is over the fence into the neighbor's yard. Bucko School Teddy will have to retrieve that one with the fire good. going on back there. To go the Too bad for Homer Center. They came close to scoring right, and then they allow a 91 yard touchdown drive and it's 21 nothing Bishop Guilfoyle in this District 6 Class A semifinal. Indiana Regional Medical Center playoff coverage will continue right here on the Renda Digital TV WCCS Football Network. Building or remodeling? Save yourself some steps and march to PenningtonSpecialty.com. Randy George at Pennington Specialty takes pride in every job, and you'll see that when you march into PenningtonSpecialty.com. Contact Randy George at Pennington Specialty for a free quote. If you're talking construction of any kind, you should be talking to Randy George at Pennington Specialty. One visit to PenningtonSpecialty.com, and you'll see why people have been marching to Pennington Specialty for years. Randy George is also a grad of Homer Center and is Wildcat proud and wishes the team the best of luck on their march to a district championship. Devin Bryan has it teed up for the Marauders, and it's a squib kick, hits an up man, and spins around like a top, and it's jumped on, I think, Romulos Dokos picked that up for Homer Center, Ball and that's who it was. Romy Dokos. Dad might be watching in Spain tonight, <laughs> 16 seconds on the clock. Well, there's a time for media one timeout. deep media ball timeout. here. Um, well, there's a media timeout, interesting timing, with 16 seconds left here in the first half. We will oblige on an Indiana Regional Medical Center playoff sports night. It's Marauders 21, Homer Center nothing, right here on the Renda Digital TV, WCCS Wildcat Football Network. Dan in a van hasn't returned your call? Chuck in a truck can't get there for two months? Stop dealing with fly-by-nighters and call a company that's fully capable for all your plumbing and heating needs. Joyce Plumbing, Heating, and Air Conditioning Incorporated. Joyce Plumbing, Heating, and Air Conditioning Incorporated is on call 24-7, 365 days a year. Visit us at JoycePlumbing.com. That's JoycePlumbing.com. Joyce Plumbing, Heating, and Air Conditioning Incorporated. The best place in town to take a leak. PA 042115. Mitsubishi has made heating and cooling your home very efficient. With Mitsubishi Zone Comfort Hyper Heating System, you no longer need separate heating and cooling systems. Contact Davis Brothers Heating and Air Conditioning, Indiana. A Mitsubishi Diamond Preferred Contractor, PA License Number 2526. Cat football here on WCCS, a PAB award winner. Pennsylvania Association of Broadcasters, we're proud of it. Out pattern, and it's Roland trying to dive for the sideline, and he gets out of bounds with 11 seconds left at the 43 yard line. So that'll be a gain of 13. That very pattern has been open uh, most of the game, and that, that's the kind of thing Homer's going to need to do. They've got to be able to finish a drive. They had a nice drive there. Just couldn't stop Bishop Guilfoyle, and that's a credit to them. You know, that, that is a quality program we're playing. First down and 10 from the BG 43. They reposition Landon Hill, empty backfield, strong right, and they're going to throw again. And this one knocked away by Yanis check as he Back stepped in front of Roland. Roland. Lucky Roland that one. If he has another step, he might be heading up the right sideline. Well, see, they adjusted right away. They recognized that they're going to do those quick outs. They cheat up a little and Played the ball, almost had a pick. By the way, the Luther Ford drive summary for BG, 12 plays, 91 yards, 6 minutes, 17 seconds. They were 3 for 3 on third down, and they picked up four first downs along the way. Yeah, they're, they're playing well tonight, no two ways about it. And there's a jumping offside, Bishop Guilfoyle, and that will cost them five yards with only seven seconds on the clock. Our ITT Indiana Total Therapy halftime report coming up. We'll have radio replays, a look at the stats, the and more as compiled by our award-winning statistician, Jerry Rossi. He has his own disclaimer now. Margin of error, 100 yards either way. 
Not much chance of getting behind these D-backs. They're, they're 20 yards deep right now. Second down and five. That's irrelevant. We could be looking at the last play of the quarter. If you throw deep, you hope for pass interference because it can't end on a uh, pass interference, but instead out pattern to Krajosek who dances out of bounds with one second left in the half. So now you can take Knocked a shot at the Cooper end zone. Rother, Rother knocks him out of bounds at the 25 yard line. Bad news, of course, Guilfoyle deferred, so they will receive the second half kickoff. And, and that is very big right now. Homer down 21, nothing. They cannot afford to give up any more points. So we'll see what we can come up with here. And Homer's going to take his time out. Uh, what the heck? Time out. Homer center. Time out. Wow. We'll yes. take one with them with one tick on the first half clock on an Indiana Regional Medical Center playoff sports night. We're coming right back. It's 21 0 Bishop Guilfoyle. One last play to close out this second quarter on the WCCS Renda Digital Wildcat. The Homer City American Legion Post 493 is proud to sponsor today's broadcast of the Homer Center Wildcats. The American Legion is proud to be a supporter of our community and amateur athletics. As you enjoy games at Memorial Field in Homer City, remember it was built over 70 years ago as a lasting remembrance of the brave men and women who have proudly served and sacrificed for our great nation. Good luck, Wildcats, from American Legion Post 493 in Homer City. Hello to our friend Tate School Teddy, watching the game tonight in the garage with his old timers from Sheets Coffee Crew. He's too cold for them tonight, he says. Come on, Tate. I see those guys about every morning. Well, Homer's sitting there about the 27-yard line. I can get one in the end zone. Hope for the best, I guess. We'll see what they come up with. Timeout, Wildcats. Homer Center taking another timeout. So we'll keep it here with one second on the clock. You know who Homer Center opens up with next year? No, I don't. I'm sure you're going to tell me, though, aren't you? A team they've never played before. That they've uh, never played? Never played before. Oh. Season opener next year. I'll let you chew on that for a <laughs> little bit before you chew on your pizza. <laughs> no, I'm not going to get any of that pizza. You have to chip away the ice. So the Wildcats now come out after their second timeout. You got Landon Hill way out here to this side of the field, Mark. Bishop Guilfoyle's ninth straight appearance in a semifinal game. Yeah, my apologies to them on the recruiting comment. That was out of line. I'm taking that back. And uh, again, no, that's the McCourt wrestling program. I think you were a little bit no, confused. No, that there. was. It is what it is. Uh, the, 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 the Wildcats, you know, I've always liked screen passes, but we've not been on un, been unable to do boy they really got this field spread don't they and cole takes the snap steps up in the pocket throws for the end zone and kesey wetter has it deflected away by his own teammate well they just wanted to make Back sure with krajosic closing in on that At pass that too time, it, is the uh, it was knocked away the and the teams head to the locker room disappointing first half for homer center they were hoping for more but bishop guilfoyle too strong in that first half for Homer Center, they seized an opportunity after a fumble, and that was kind of a tone setter for the first half. We'll talk about that. We'll have radio replays, stats, and more when we return and welcome you to our ITT halftime report. Guilfoyle, two touchdowns in the first quarter. They tack on one in the second on a 91-yard drive. They lead 21 to nothing as we go to break here on an IRMC playoff sports night, and you're listening to it right here on the WCCS Renda Digital TV Football Network. Want to buy a new or pre-owned vehicle? Want to sell your current vehicle? At Luther Ford, you can do it all. Check out the great Luther Ford inventory and drive off today. Or order the exact vehicle you want. Have a trade? Luther Ford will give you a check for your vehicle's high trade-in value. 
If you want to just sell your current vehicle, Luther Ford can pay you thousands over KBB. At Luther Ford, you can do it all. Luther Ford, Route 119, Homer City. At IRMC, we have all of the necessary pieces in place to perform complex operations, including highly skilled and specially trained surgeons, their support team of experts, and advanced technology like the Da Vinci Robotic Surgical System. As a result, patients spend less time in the hospital, recover faster, and get treated close to home. So there's no reason to puzzle over where you should get your surgical care. The answer is right here at IRMC. Hi Wildcat fans, this is Coach Greg Page. I would like to thank Wildcat Nation for your support, and I especially want to thank the Homer City Area Athletic Booster Club for making tonight's video presentation possible. The Bears Midget Program has provided a foundation for Wildcat football for decades. Through the growth of the boosters, they now impact many of our sports here at Homer Center. From our team, we say thank you Homer City Area Athletic Booster Club for making a big difference in our community since 1958. I'm Shannon Lipniskis. Hutton Blues Insurance of Indiana is proud to support high school football. I'm Jay Blues. You can't beat football season. And when it comes to your insurance needs, you won't beat the service we provide at Hutton Blues Insurance. Our family business has served Indiana and the surrounding counties for more than three decades. Once you do business with Hutton Blues Insurance, we'll make you a customer for life. So best of luck area teams from your friends at Hutton Blues Insurance in Indiana. Penalty on BG on a pass, took the football to the 44-yard line, but it ended up stalling, and then a shank punt of only 13 yards set up Guilfoyle at their own 40, but they couldn't get anything going. Next possession, Homer Center starting at their own 11-yard line after a 45-yard Bryant punt. A Landon Hill fumble, and Kesey Wetter picked it up on a hop, took it to the end zone, but it was called back on a block in the back, so the Guilfoyle Marauders started at the Wildcat 21. Carson Kesey Wetter carried for 12 yards to the nine yard line. And then on first in goal from the nine, it was Kesey Wetter once again. Yeah. Kesey Wetter gonna keep it again, bouncing it outside. And I think he has a clean trip to that right pylon for a touchdown. Carson Kesey Wetter from nine yards out on first and goal, his 15th rushing touchdown. And the Marauders lead six to nothing with six and a half minutes to play in the first quarter. They do indeed capitalize on the line. And this time, no penalty. Devin Bryan added the extra point to make it 7 0 at that point. Cats picked up two first downs, but on a fourth and one, they committed a procedure penalty, made it fourth and six, so they punted it away. Only a 23 yard punt this time from Kurjosic. So the Marauders started at their own 41 yard line. They overcame a second and 15, moved the football into Homer Center territory on a couple of passes to Colin Rother. And then quarterback Carson Kesewetter for the second time on as many drives called his own number. From the Wildcat 44, motion man is Rother again right toward us if you're viewing it. And the give up the middle. And no, it's Kesewetter keeping it down the right sideline to the 30 to the 20. Makes a move, gets by a defender, 10-5 touchdown. Carson Kesewetter from 44 right yards side. out. Excellent he is in ball fake. And he scores again his second of the night from 44 yards. And it's 13-0 Marauders with 61 seconds left in the first quarter. Not real good tackling for Homer Center there either. No, it wasn't, and it was 13 to nothing. Bryant made it 14 to nothing. 12 play. Let me check that. Actually, that was a four play, 59 yard drive, but then three possessions in a row. After Homer Center actually had a good drive late in the first into the second quarter, they started at their own 26 yard line, and uh, in the second quarter, they were in Guilfoyle territory on the first play at the 38. They drove it to the nine yard line, but came up empty. 14 plays, 63 yards. They picked up five first downs, but couldn't punch it in. Would have made things interesting. And Guilfoyle halfway through the second quarter responded with a marvelous drive, covering 91 yards on 12 plays. An 18 yard pass to Rother to midfield. A 30 yard pass to Janicek, who ripped it away from Kurjosic. We thought it was an interception. Janicek, as he was going down, stripped it uh, away from Krajosik, we believe. So they eventually had a second down in goal at the seven yard line. 
This time, Kesey Wetter not with his legs, but with his right arm. Kesey Wetter throwing slant in pattern, caught touchdown. That was easy. Rother on the reception. His third touchdown reception of the season, and he was open on a slant in. And it's 20 to nothing, Guilfoyle with 18 seconds left here in the first half. Excellent drive by Guilfoyle. So the Wildcats waning seconds of the first half, 16 seconds. They did complete a couple of passes and then a heave from the uh, into the end zone from the 25 yard line was knocked away as the clock hit triple zeros. Wildcats are stuck on zero. Guilfoyle has three touchdowns. They lead 21 to nothing as our ITT Indiana Total Therapy halftime report continues right here on the WCCS Renda Digital TV Football Network. Hi, my name is Billy, and this is the bus that I take to school every day. It's a Smith bus. We have a really fun bus driver. And guess what? Smith Bus Company is hiring new drivers. That's right, Billy. Smith Bus Company is hiring. Founded in 1954, the Grayston Coral Sportsman's Club has been a hit for young and old. Dues are only $15 and include fishing and use of the rifle range. The Grayston Coral Sportsman's Club prides itself in events for kids, including Kids Fishing Day. The annual John Matrisic Singles Pool Tournament will be held coming up Saturday, November 20th. DJ Brian Supko will spin your favorites Thanksgiving Eve starting at 8. And the club's banquet and dance hall is available for weddings and special occasions. The Grayston Coral Sportsman's Club, Neil Road, Grayston. Proud to make tonight's video stream possible for the Homer Center community. Dairy cows provide more than 90% of the planet's milk supply. Like a human's fingerprints, no two cow's spots are exactly the same. Farmers measure milk in pounds, not gallons, and it takes 12 pounds of whole milk to get one gallon of ice cream. Regardless of whether you choose skim, 1%, 2%, or whole milk, the calcium and nutrient content is the same. Milk is sometimes called nature's most nearly perfect food. A message from the Allied Milk Producers. Your grandmother's fine china, those trendy sneakers, your collection of hand-carved duck decoys. Auto Owners protects your home. Because, well, somebody should. That's simple human sense. Oh, now you do your job. I'm State Senator Joe Pittman, wishing all our student athletes and their families every success on the gridiron. Friday Night Lights are always exciting, and I recognize how important it is for our students to be involved in activities, whether it be in athletics or the performing arts. These have been challenging times, and I salute not only all of our students, but also all who guide them on and off the gridiron. And I wish all of our hometown teams the best of luck this season. We welcome you back to our ST Bank broadcast booth from the gridiron to the classroom. ST Bank has you covered. Again, a special thank you to the Grayston Coral Sportsman's Club, the Club Savoy Sons of Italy, and the Homer City Area Athletic Booster Club for making the stream possible tonight with some underwriting to help us with the broadcast rights fees. And I mentioned uh, if you're watching the game, I may have given the wrong email address. Somebody pointed out it is sports at WCCSradio.com. Sports at WCCSradio.com. Let us know where you're viewing the game, and we'll shout, send a little shout-out to you as well. And before we get to the stats, again, that wonderful community dinner for Thanksgiving provided by the Coral Grayston fire department 11 to 2 on thanksgiving day it's completely free cdc guidelines will be followed meals will be picked up at the fire hall via drive through or deliveries even available everyone's welcome if you need uh, assistance please 
We would also like to do it. Take advantage of this wonderful of offer. Call Julie Flowers and, and place your order in advance. 724-549-1690. 549-1690. That's just great word. Uh, yeah, very great nice. work. People very nice. uh, doing good things behind the scenes. What about the stats? Is speaking of good work compiled by Jerry Rossi. Quick stats brought to you by First Commonwealth Bank. Well, for Bishop Guilfoyle, Rother had six carries for 24 yards. Kesey Winter had uh, seven carries, 66 yards, and a touchdown. Uh, through the air, Kesey Winter, seven of eight, 94 yards, and a touchdown. So he had two rushing touchdowns, plus one through the air, 21 plays, 184 yards for very efficient Bishop Guilfoyle offense. For Homer Center, calling Troop. Nine carries for 40 yards. Landon Hill had nine carries, also at 37 yards. Cole McAnally had four totes for 10. And Michael Krajosik, two for 15. Homer had 24 rushing attempts, 102 yards. Not bad. Through the air, three of seven for McAnally, just 29 yards. 31 plays the Wildcats ran, 131 yards. They have got to finish tall order coming up. they got to kick off two Guilfoyle, so they must stop them. Did some good things. Couldn't finish a couple no. of drives, and the turnover was costly. Very much. Twenty-one nothing. Guilfoyle as our ITT halftime report rolls on from Memorial Field in Homer City. Wildcats have never lost a home playoff game. Could happen tonight, barring a big, big second half comeback. Twenty-one nothing. Marauders right here on the WCCS Wildcat Renda Digital TV Football Network. Hey, Jerry. The Pediatric Care Center of Indiana and Marion Center are proud to support our student athletes in tonight's game. Each athlete has represented their school district and their community to the best of their ability in these challenging times. Doctors Rizwan and Amina Jabber, physician's assistant Nikki Phillips, and the entire staff at both locations would like to wish all of the athletes best of luck tonight and in the future. The Pediatric Care Center, two locations, 119 Professional Center in Indiana and the Mahoning Medical Center, Highway 403 in Marion Center. Do you need tires soon? Then go to firstclassmobiletire.com and put in the make and model of your vehicle. Then shop tires and set up a time that is best for you. Now just sit back and relax while First Class Mobile Tire comes to your home or office. While you sit on the couch, get some stuff done around the house, or continue your workday routine, First Class Mobile Tire will come to you with a convenient and top-notch professional tire service. Schedule a time that's best for you at firstclassmobiletire.com. Renda Media says thank you to the Club Savoy Sons of Italy for making tonight's playoff video stream possible for the Greater Homer Center School District community. The Club Savoy Sons of Italy is a great community partner and they're proud to make tonight's video stream possible for Wildcat fans everywhere. Social memberships are available at the Club Savoy. Upcoming events at the club include music by 13 Stories tomorrow night. DJ Keith Davis, December 11th. Octane appearing December 18th. The public is always welcome at the Club Savoy Sons of Italy, Old Route 119, Homer City. Happy 76th anniversary, Bruno's Restaurant, and to celebrate the new Bruno's drive through specials are even better. On Tuesdays, enjoy chicken alfredo or parmesan. Wednesdays features Bruno's famous lasagna or spaghetti and meatballs. And Thursday is rigatoni or sausage parmesan. Plus, all three days offer manicotti, too. All meals have large portions that come with salad roll and dessert for only $12. Your dinner choice is an easy one with Bruno's $12 drive through specials. Bruno's Italian Restaurant on the 1100 block of Philadelphia Street in downtown Indiana. The C. Frederick Bouncer Funeral Home and Cremation Services is proud to be a community partner in tonight's game. For over 100 years in western Pennsylvania and since 1968 in Homer City, satisfaction is their top priority and your needs will come first. The new modern funeral home opened in 2004 and is spacious with a beautiful entrance and new carpeting. Large visitation rooms, a chapel, family conference space, children's lounge and more. Proud to serve the greater Homer Center community, the C. Frederick Bouncer Funeral Home and Cremation Services in Homer City.
Back with you for a final time on the ITT Halftime Report. Has some uh, messages coming in. Don't forget, uh, you can let us know in what town and state you are viewing the game by emailing sports at wccsradio.com. If you're viewing, you see the scroll across the bottom of the screen. Again, sports at wccsradio.com. Cheering on my nephew Michael and the Wildcats from the sunny state of Florida is Odessa Michelle. Tim Leesock watching the game. Hey, Mark and Coach Hilliard watching in Palm Beach, Florida tonight. You guys do a great job. Thank you, Tim. Class of 1981. Hello to Josh Walker and the C crew watching from the control room of Solco located at the Seward Power Plant. <laughs> Stefan Brodsky, greetings, tuning in tonight from Thornton, Colorado, just north of Denver from Indiana, PA, IUP class of 75. Thank you, Stefan. I hope I have your name right. Hello to Dell Patterson. We remember that name. Oh, Great yes. linebacker. Dell and Missy Patterson watching in Lancaster County. Also tonight, Danny Suma, class of 86, watching the game in Mechanicsburg, hey, Pennsylvania. And uh, uh, one other guy, former Wildcat District 6 champion from 1994. Uh, a red tent located over here and on the that press is box side of the bleachers Mr. Down Tanner. The you remember the offensive uh, lineman? Yes, Kevin, 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 Kevin Tanner. Hello, tonight. Mario Sacco. Hey, Mark, Center good band. call tonight. Thank you, Mario. Speaking of good calls, he's outstanding in the media field up in uh, New York. So if you want to send us a message, feel free, sports at wccsradio.com. Or you can post a message hey, on our Center Facebook fans, page. I don't have as quick of access to those, Sunday, but you can email me at sports at wccsradio.com. And your Pennsylvania Association of Broadcasters award-winning coverage of Homer Center Sports will continue. That's the ITT Indiana Total Therapy Halftime Report with the score Homer Center trailing Bishop Gil Boyle 21 to nothing. We'll come back with the second half kickoff right after this on the WCCS Renda Digital TV Football Network. Building or remodeling? Save yourself some steps and march to PenningtonSpecialty.com. Randy George at Pennington Specialty takes pride in every job, and you'll see that when you march into PenningtonSpecialty.com. Contact Randy George at Pennington Specialty for a free quote. If you're talking construction of any kind, you should be talking to Randy George at Pennington Specialty. One visit to PenningtonSpecialty.com, and you'll see why people have been marching to Pennington Specialty for years. Randy George is also a grad of Homer Center and is Wildcat proud and wishes the team the best of luck on their march to a district championship. Dan in a van hasn't returned your call? Chuck in a truck can't get there for two months? Stop dealing with fly-by-nighters and call a company that's fully capable for all your plumbing and heating needs. Joyce Plumbing, Heating, and Air Conditioning Incorporated. Joyce Plumbing, Heating, and Air Conditioning Incorporated is on call 24-7, 365 days a year. Visit us at JoycePlumbing.com. That's JoycePlumbing.com. Joyce Plumbing, Heating, and Air Conditioning Incorporated. The best place in town to take a leak. PA 042115. At RMC at Chestnut Ridge and Blairsville Zergic Care, they fast-track you for quick access to their team of medical experts. Highly trained and ready to treat all minor illnesses and injuries at IRMC at Chestnut Ridge. Urgic Care open 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. Route 22, Blairsville. Mason Bell has it teed up, squib kick. And BG's Riley, he slips as he goes to fill the ball. Now they lose the handle and they pounce on it at about the 25-yard line as some sod kicked up. So BG, three seconds into the third quarter, will take over at about their own 25-yard line. Very quickly, I want to mention Powder Puff footballs back at Homer City's Memorial Field. First annual Lady Wildcats Powder Puff Turkey Bowl will be held this <laughs> Sunday, November 21st. They need a referee ward. You can do that. No, Gates you. are open at 3 o'clock with the first game starting at 4, pitting the freshman girls against the sophomore girls. The winner of this game will face the winner of the 5 p.m. game where the junior girls face the senior girls. Championship game will start at 6 o'clock. Get back to it after this That'll play. That'll be fun. Kesey Wetter hands it off. Cooper Rother with the football. And Cooper Rother up to the, about the 30-yard line. 
four or five <laughs> yards just to finish this Henry. announcement they handed us. Band Boosters concession stand Band will be opened and a basket yards. raffle, 50-50 raffle will be conducted before the championship game. Admission is $5 per adults, $2 per students, so please come out and enjoy all of the exciting Powder Puff football action. John, are we video streaming Powder Puff? I don't think that's going to happen. John's kind of saying, I'm not so sure. You spotting, Dennis? No. Nope. No help. I guess I'll be here alone. Second down and five. Guilfoyle leading 21 to nothing. Motion man is Cooper Rother behind the formation. They hand it to him on a jet sweep around the left end. Cooper ducks under a tackler and gets uh, over the 35 to the 36 for a first down. Good hard nose running. Wildcats had a defense, but I think they had a Defender slip too as Rother cut it up. They restart up the clock. Line. Rother, nice job of, of making those cuts. And uh, hey, this is a real character check for Homer's D. They, uh, they've got to stay within th- that. That third touchdown has really made it tough on them. So they've got to stop Guilfoy here and get the ball back and, and come up with some type of offense. This Marauders offense averages 27 and a half points a game, 176 yards rushing, 131 passing. 307 yards, and there's a flag. Flies are down. But the only thing Bishop Guilfoyle's done wrong is that a couple Ball of penalties. That was Rogers. a jump there that the time by the left penalty. tackle. Coach Wheeler mentioned uh, early First on they uh, were committing too many penalties. He thought that was a key tonight. Line. Chelsea Krajosic rooting for Michael. She said the wrong name showed up, but uh, she's still in the sunny state of Florida. Uh, sounds like a good place to be yeah, there's tonight. A lot of people in warm climates right now. <laughs> Tuning in from Philadelphia to cheer on my nephew, number 85, on the BG team. I think that's Ecken Road. The give and good yardage as they recover the penalty yardage plus three or four Rather up to about the 39-yard line. You know, he says says like number 85. We don't game. have an 85 game on our seven. roster. Jeff Stifler sends us that email. Jeff, maybe you can help me out uh, because the roster we have only goes up to 82, and that's Joseph Eckenrod. Seeing if there's a Stifler. Got one right here. Stifler on the. If he could. 85 is. Oh, that is Joseph Joseph Eckenrod. Eckenrod. Yep. Second down and seven for the Marauders, just shy of their own 40. And a read option. Kesey Wetter is going to keep it. Kesey Wetter gets to the 40, and that's all. Justin Walbeck, I think, going to get up. Off Justin the bottom of the Mason pile, along with Vinny Taglietti and Mason Bell. So the Wildcats, Ward, they're going to have to tighten up the coverage Game because third down and seven from their own 40. From We've seen it a few times where Homer Center's defense could not get off the field. Well, you, you got to figure Guilfoyle knows that. And so, you know, you, you got to take the chance. I think you got to trust your guys to come up tight, maybe three yards cushion and uh, maybe the little chuck stop that pattern because it's just a little timing pattern. Kesey Wetter doesn't uh, take but a step and throw. Vincent Shafari, receiver to the left. Pressure breaks down, rolls to his left, throws against his body, deflected away nicely by Anthony Rowland who got a paw in front of Yep. Cooper Rother. Rother. So the Guilfoyle Marauders for the second time tonight will have to punt it away. Good play by Roland. Good pressure also on Kesey Wetter. Forced him out of the, the pocket. Got him up. to roll left a little. He did a nice job of turning and throwing. That pass Fourth almost complete. That Roland did a great job. Two tonight. That's the 17th pass breakup for Roland this season. 21 nothing. Juniata Valley leading Portage. Devin Bryant to punt averages 43.9 coming into tonight's action. His second boot of the night. Long snapper is Colin Campbell. I don't think it's the Colin Campbell that run, helps run the NHL but, and used to play for the Penguins. Krajosic lets it roll, now picks it up at the last minute inside the 20. Heads far sideline, 25-30, 35-40 to the Bishop Guilfoyle, 45 far sideline in front of the Marauder bench. It ends up being a pretty nifty 28-yard return for Michael Krajosic after a 41-yard punt. Smart, the good move by Michael. I mean, it's a risk, but you got to take risk when you're down three scores, and he did, and they kind of got the Guilfoyle punt cover coverage team sleeping. They were kind of trotting down there. All of a sudden, boom, he was by it. Two-thirds of them. Nice tackle by the gentleman on the far side. I think that was the punter. Bryant. And uh, Homer sets up, and you know, you hate to say this, is, but this is a drive they must score on. I, I, they get back in the ball game, who knows what could happen. The turnover in this game could turn real quick. Riley Clevenger, we haven't seen him a lot on offense. I, he's a receiver to the left boundary. I'm not sure if somebody's hurt or not. Who's not out there Maybe, uh, well, Zenizak is out there. 
Roland. Roland is not. And the give, and around the right side, it's Colin Troop. Right Troop in front of the Guilfoyle right bench, he gets up to about the 48-yard line Looks or like so. Pollock forcing him out of bounds. Solid Gave three yards. Looking at the four, uh, but replay across the way. I'm not sure. It might have been Cooper Rother that ran him out of bounds. Rolling back in the ball game now. He had a little equipment adjustment, I think. So second down and seven. Football just shy of midfield. They operate right to left as we look out of our S&T Bank broadcast booth window and airing it out deep downfield and diving the closest man to the football at the 10-yard line was the Bishop Guilfoyle Marauders, and it was Ryan Hag. Ryan Hag on the coverage for the Pretty much step for step with Anthony, so that uh, wasn't going to happen. Now you could break that route off and get this first down. We'll see what uh, the coaches have in mind here. Third down and seven for Homer Center. Ball on that right hash wide side of the field toward the Homer Center bench as the Wildcats operate toward the north end zone. Let's see the cushion here, Mark. <laughs> right below us. We've got seven yards right here. Hag on uh, Roland manning up. They send uh, Krajosik in motion, and the Wildcats may be looking to set up the screen, and it goes through the hands of Colin Troop. And incomplete, and I'm not sure that was going to get the yardage anyway. And uh, that's one that uh, Troop, he's mad at himself, yeah. and they're going to have to punt it away. He was looking to go before he caught the ball. I said Homer hasn't run screens real well, and it's it's a tough thing to execute. He made he might have if he breaks a tackle get that first, but it didn't happen. They got to punt it away here and, and hope for some kind of miscue by the Guilfoyle boys. Got a few hellos we'll send out after this Michael Krajosic punt. Snap is back and Krajosic better punt this time. It hits at the 26 yard line. Cooper Rother picks it up on two hops at the 22 right sideline where he's forced out of bounds by Homer Center's Colin Troop. Keep it right here. Want to say hello to Emily Schaefer watching at Diamond Drug in Indiana. Senior number 61, Michael Yunt tonight, rooting for Michael. Yes, second road is 85, says Jeff Stifler. Jeff, thank you. We uh, welcome all BG First fans time, that might be watching the wherever they are tonight. From the Pauline Berlowski sends an email. Wayne and Pauline Springer cheering on our grandson, grandson Cole McAnaldi and the Wildcats. Let's go, Cats. Thank you for reaching out. We appreciate it. Uh, it's amazing how many states we've touched oh, I'll on. I'll tell you, yeah, it was just fascinating. Yeah, we got a wildcat nation out there, don't we? First and 10, and Kesey Wetter trying to get around the left end, runs through a tackle of Roland and finally dragged down by Kesey Justin Wetter, Walbeck, who did side. not give up on that play. Walbeck Great effort by Walbeck. Wildcats. Mentioned word. There have been some good linebackers. Johnny Zemetsky always comes Second to mind for me. 1994, Kevin uh, Rainey, Dell Patterson we mentioned, and so many others. You go back a, further than me into the 60s yeah. with some outstanding football players. <laughs> further than that, actually. Second down <laughs> and nine. We won't, uh, we won't pursue that. Yeah, a, a terrific uh, career for Justin Wall. Look at this he, formation. He's, in, he's impressive. Deep pistol back with a sidecar. Kesey Wetter hands it off to Rother. Rother, like you shot out of a cannon to midfield into Rother, the 49-yard right line of the Homer Center Wildcats. They are Three moving the chains once again, and I think BG kind of smells a knockout the punch if they can the yeah, they put yeah, together a drive here. If they score here, it's Wildcats definitely a knockout. Uh, the Wildcats, uh, uh, and a lead blocker that time out of that formation, did a nice job, and Rother really reads that well. They put it down at the 49-yard line. 21-0 Bishop Guilfoyle. Leading two scores in the first, capitalized on a Wildcat turnover. A couple of big plays. Second. Huh? Yep. Kesey Wetter hands off to Rother. Boy, he's running hard right now, isn't he? To the 45 yard Rother line for about middle. four more. For Homer Center, was it Clevenger, Clevenger Dennis? On the Wildcats. tackle for Homer Center. Riley, really, the, three, particularly second the second seven. half of the year, has been very, very solid. Now fifth on the team in tackles. 15 pass breakups. He has an interception to his credit. They put him down at the 46-yard line, so it's second down and seven. Already 6.45 left in this third quarter. Patrick Riley, a receiver to the right boundary, as they send trips near side. if you're watching on the bottom of your screen. 
Rother in the backfield, and Kesey Wetter direct snap. He's going to keep it, and down goes Kesey Wetter by Justin Walbeck. Wow, we wow did. was that textbook by Justin? There's been two hits tonight that have stood out, and they were both done by Justin Walbeck. You know, I'm not sure, but Walbeck might be thinner. Let's put it that way. Now, they list him at 6'1", 183. But in his four years, he really hasn't been a young man that's put on weight. I've put on more weight the last four years, I can tell you that. Well, that's probably last year, but that's another year. <laughs> last month. <laughs> but, yeah, he has stayed pretty thin and mean. Uh, and he, there's no fat on that boy. And Such a he, nice and he plays that way. Yeah, he's a great kid. Great kid. Third down and seven. Wildcats need a stop. Rother in motion toward the BG bench. Shotgun snap. Kesey Wetter, lots of time, dancing around, firing over the middle, deflected, incomplete. Who got a paw in there? Landon Hill got a paw in there, and I think the Marauders will have to punt it away. Yeah, and, uh, great job on the job this, this of the secondary. Uh, the defense has, has risen to the occasion, Mark, you know, and they're not getting pushed all over the field, and I think that was something that we were concerned about. We'll have but immediate timeout after hurt. this punt. 5.43 to play in the third quarter, 21 nothing Marauders. Fourth down and seven from the Wildcat, 44, 44-yard average for Bryant. That Long snappers, Colin huh? Campbell. And kick is away, floating kick. And Krajosic calls for a fair catch, drops it, hops on it at about the 16-yard line. We have immediate timeout on the field with 5.35 to play in the third quarter. It's Bishop Guilfoyle 21 and the Homer Center Wildcats nothing on an IRMC playoff sports night. And you're listening and watching it right here on the WCCS Renda Digital TV Football Network. Renda Media says thank you to the Club Savoy Sons of Italy for making tonight's playoff video stream possible for the Greater Homer Center School District community. The Club Savoy Sons of Italy is a great community partner, and they're proud to make tonight's video stream possible for Wildcat fans everywhere. Social memberships are available at the Club Savoy. Upcoming events at the club include music by 13 Stories tomorrow night. DJ Keith Davis, December 11th. Octane appearing December 18th. The public is always welcome at the Club Savoy Sons of Italy, Old Route 119, Homer City. I'm Shannon Lipniscus. Hutton Blues Insurance of Indiana is proud to support high school football. I'm Jay Blues. You can't beat football season. And when it comes to your insurance needs, you won't beat the service we provide at Hutton Blues Insurance. Our family business has served Indiana and the surrounding counties for more than three decades. Once you do business with Hutton Blues Insurance, we'll make you a customer for life. So best of luck area teams from your friends at Hutton Blues Insurance in Indiana. back to Memorial Field, 21-0 Marauders. A lot can happen to kids after hours and not just on the gridiron. Fevers, falls, bumps, and bruises. If your child or teen needs care and your doctor's office is closed, IRMC at Chestnut Ridge is open weekdays and weekends, 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. Old Route 22 in Blairsville, where you can get in, get out, get better. First and 10 Homer Center from their own 16-yard line. And let's see who has that football for Homer Center on the far sideline. I think it's Landon. Landon Hill on this series does have that ball and he gets about five yards from the 16 the to the right 21 side. as Cole McAnaldi again went under center as Homer Center has kind of made that little tweak to their offense tonight. On the tackle for the Bishop Guilfoyle Marauders it was P.J. Pollock. Might add uh, a, a lead blocker to that formation. We might be able to get a little more out of him. Second down, we'll call it four. Gives uh, six yards to Landon. And they're going to feed it to him again. And Landon is going to be stacked up. And down he goes Tell after maybe three yards up to the 25-yard line. So it's going to set up third down and a yard. It might have been Colin Butler and Sante Bambachi on the field. If this score holds and Junie Adovelli holds on, what was that score, Jerry? At the that was 21 21-0 nothing nothing as well. They're kind of matching each other tonight. Guilfoyle and Junie Adov met in the title game in 2019. Guess who won? Guilfoyle, 36-17. Guilfoyle. Third down and a yard for Homer Center. They give it to Hill. Hill, a first down, trying to fight for yardage, and he gets to the 30. Hill with the carry. So he picks up five yards from the 25 to the 30-yard line. David Abraham, one of the linebackers in Justin Wheeler's defense, picks up 
Well, if you're a Wildcats fan, you Go guys ahead. be proud of the way that they're they're playing here. They're fighting back. They're trying to do something to well, offensively get back in this ball game. They're not quitting, and I, I think that's a trademark of this program. Four minutes left in the third quarter. They trail by three touchdowns, and they send a blitz. And Hill has the football, and Hill who has two years ahead of him. He should be something special next year. Has five more to the 35, so ground and pound right now. Old-fashioned football that Rick Faust would be proud of. Yeah, Guilfoyle is running an inside blitz. I've seen that three times now in this, in this series. Colin Campbell, the middle linebacker, along with Abraham. Outside right is Yanishak. Right end's a good one, and Anthony Shafari. Now they look to pass, throw out in the flat here to Roland. And Roland forced out of bounds as he gets to about the 43-yard line. On the force out, it was Janicek and also 10, Ryan Hag. So it's enough for a Wildcat first down. The Wildcats, this drive started at the 16-yard line. They've moved the ball at times. They just haven't been able to finish. Yeah, they, they had success with those short outs uh, in, at the end of the first half. And, again, they're there. They're open. Hag's given up five yards at least every time. Pitt tomorrow against Virginia. Big game. Panthers at 330 can clinch the Coastal Division. Give to Hill. Breaks a tackle. Backs his way over the 45 to the 46-yard line where the purple and white swarm to the football. He never does go down. And a gain of about four to the 47. He is, he is a load, Landon. He's a tough runner. you got to love it. Looking on our video replay, ran right through an ankle tackle attempt. And uh, I don't think the Guilfoyle player, that might have been uh, Bambachi, couldn't believe he didn't bring him down. Yeah, he's a, and again, that was a toss. It just wasn't blocked very well. Second down, six to go. They feed it to Landon again, lowers the shoulder. That's what I like about him. Even when he gets hit, he gains a couple of yards or so on second effort. Bambachi again. You want to play a little bocce ball this weekend? Too cold for you, right? No bocce. Got the pit closed for the season. Beat that bocce ball to death here. 49-yard line of the Marauders. Third down to two for the Wildcats. Krajosic, a receiver to the right boundary, wide side of the field toward the Guilfoyle bench. We approach the two-minute mark of this quarter. And Cole hands it off to Landon. Landon this time, good defense by Yanishak. Yanishak leads the team, as I mentioned, coming in with 65 tackles. Forward. And if you follow statistics, boy, it's going to be close to a first down, yeah. isn't it? They might need the chains. I think so. They are going to bring the chains across. So we'll take a 30-second break with 155 to play in the third quarter. No scoring in this quarter. Guilfoyle scored three times in the first half. However, they continue to lead the Wildcats 21 to nothing on an Indiana Regional Medical Center playoff sports night on the WCCS Wildcat Football Network. The Homer City American Legion Post 493 is proud to sponsor today's broadcast of the Homer Center Wildcats. The American Legion is proud to be a supporter of our community and amateur athletics. As you enjoy games at Memorial Field in Homer City, remember it was built over 70 years ago as a lasting remembrance of the brave men and women who have proudly served and sacrificed for our great nation. Good luck, Wildcats, from American Legion Post 493 in Homer City. Is short ward, no decision here. No, I don't from the think Marauder so. 47, I don't think so, but fourth down. Hill's done the heavy lifting on this drive. 28 yards rushing for Hill on this drive. Right up to date, Landon tonight. 65 yards on 16 carries. Quick stats brought to you by First Commonwealth Bank. And Cole McAnally going to go under center or not? Uh, well, he looked at the sideline and I told him yes. Yeah, so I Soggy think that's turf. What if it's do. a keeper, you get, you worry about that boy. Look at them load the box. Yeah, they got a big boy there on the nose. And it's a quarterback keeper, and they push Cole forward. He'll have enough for the first down. He didn't get much, but he didn't need keeper. much, did he? No, just a uh, good effort by the. Landed there to come in in the back and just keep pushing them. Old tactic that we don't see that much, uh, but it, it seems to become popular lately. First and 10 from the Marauder 46 yard line. 21 0 Bishop Guilfoyle leading. 
135 left here in the quarter. Cole back to pass. Going to throw deep. He has a man out there rolling. And it's that's going to be a flag interference at the five-yard line. Streaking down the left sideline. Rolling got behind Cooper Rother. And that's going to be a 15-yard penalty and a first down. We'll get a view of it, I believe, on our replay. And... Yeah. Low setback as Cole went under center. I kind of like the way they've uh, mixed this up a little bit tonight. I do too. And Cole, pretty good protection, real good protection. Look at that pocket. Good that offensive line work. And Roland had his man beat and uh, pretty well thrown ball too. And yeah. Rother had, had no choice but to interfere him. Penalty yardage tonight. Seventh penalty on Guilfoyle for 60 yards. Quick stats brought to you by First Commonwealth Bank time to be first, and the penalty moves the ball to the 31. Probably a good penalty, though. I mean, that's a touchdown if he doesn't interfere. Wide side of the field toward the bench of Guilfoyle. The pass goes out that way to Krajosik at the 26. Little stutter step moving. He has it stripped away from him and streaking up the left sideline to the 50, to the 40, to the 20, to the 15, to the 10. Who has that football? I, I haven't Kirsten spotted Leonard. that number yet, but it's a touchdown. It might be Cooper Rother who took it about 75 yards. We'll get it officially Gunner on the replay. Recovery. It is Cooper Rother. Returns the ball for a touchdown. And he, here's Kurjosic with the pass reception. He takes it to the 23 yard line, and R Rother comes up with the ball and returns it 77 yards officially for a touchdown. Unbelievable. With 113 remaining in the football game, that is the knockout punch, and it comes in the strangest of fashions. Well, there's not much else you could say to that. Uh, you, you're taught to protect the ball. And Michael's trying to gain extra yards there and uh, just got it ripped out of his hands. Simple as that. There's not, no magic to it. That, kid, that pretty much attempt, wraps it. Yep, Devin Bryant to attempt the extra point. Out of the hold of Janicek, and the kick is good. And it's 28 nothing, and Bryant is good as far as kickers go. 113 to play in the football game. That has to be extremely disheartening for Homer Center as they had a good drive going, and Krajosek had a first down, just had it stripped. Rother, got to give him credit, and he returned it 77 yards. 113 to play in the third. Guilfoyle 28, and the Homer Center Wildcats nothing on the WCCS Wildcat Football Network. At IRMC, we have all of the necessary pieces in place to perform complex operations, including highly skilled and specially trained surgeons, their support team of experts, and advanced technology like the Da Vinci Robotic Surgical System. As a result, patients spend less time in the hospital, recover faster, and get treated close to home. So there's no reason to puzzle over where you should get your surgical care. The answer is right here at IRMC. Every day, businesses open with a determination to make this day better than yesterday. Families work to create a better life. Communities come together to provide better opportunities. At First Commonwealth, we're proud to be part of this journey to a better tomorrow, to provide resources that help businesses succeed, to inspire families to save for a brighter financial future, to help support our communities and keep them strong, and be better together every day. 61 yards they drove the football again 410 three first downs including that play right Jerry yeah, that would have been a first down yeah we've said that they've pretty much battled even Steven uh, with Guilfoyle but the big plays have just killed them Devin Bryant's kick Colin Troop takes it at the four yard line that kicking game is such a weapon for them comes near sideline gets a nice block from Roland to the 20 little stutter step move and out of bounds he goes and Homer Center will start at the return, about the 20, check that 31 yard line. We'll see where they see put where the football they put down. it here. I'm not sure. See where they're marking it across the way. Yeah, about the 30, 30 yard line, it looks like. First and 10 for the Wildcats. You call him trying to get a little of his magic going there. He's returned a couple kicks this year. What are we marking? A penalty? Is there a penalty on the play? Or they're going to say he was out of bounds, I guess, oh, at the 27. Okay. First on 10 from the 27 yards. 105 line. left in the third quarter. Wildcats, regardless, have had an outstanding season with oh, a yes. relatively young ball club. 
As I said earlier, if you'd have said that they would have been in this position, eight wins and three losses at the first of the year, I'm sure you won't get too many takers. A lot of question marks, but, boy, they've really responded. They have Noah Henry in the backfield as a blocker. Pistol back is Troop. He gets the handoff, and uh, Troop, not a lot going on there, maybe two yards to the 29-yard line. Colin Butler on the tackle for the Colin Bishop Butler Guilfoyle the Marauders. Marauders, along Eight with second down and eight. Dominic Janaschek. I mean, if you're just watching this casually, you didn't see those big plays, you'd think this, this game's been pretty much even. Homer might have a little bit of edge. In this half, they have. But, uh, again, unable to finish in the turnovers. We view Ouch. it from the s and Bank broadcast booth. Relationship banking, one customer at a time. Trips to the right for Homer Center. Tight end right is Noah Henry, and Cole McAnulty takes the pass, flips it out in the flat to Z uh, Zenizak, and Zenizak couldn't get the footing going. And one of the reasons was a defender out there, Vincent Shafari, I think that was. Yep. Yeah. And now the Wildcats, as the quarter is going to come to a close, are going to be behind the chains and start the fourth with a third down and 11. Three quarters in the book. It's been all Bishop Guilfoyle Marauders couple of costly turnovers for Homer Center. It's 28-0 Bishop Guilfoyle as we head to the fourth. Thanks to the law office of Patrick Doherty for being our presenting sponsor of the third quarter. Fourth quarter action coming up in a minute on an IRNC playoff sports night on the WCCS Renda Digital TV Football Network. The Pediatric Care Center of Indiana and Marion Center are proud to support our student athletes in tonight's game. Each athlete has represented their school district and their community to the best of their ability in these challenging times. Doctors Rizwan and Amina Jabber, physician's assistant Nikki Phillips, and the entire staff at both locations would like to wish all of the athletes best of luck tonight and in the future. The Pediatric Care Center, two locations, 119 Professional Center in Indiana and the Mahoning Medical Center, Highway 403 in Marion Center. Mitsubishi has made heating and cooling your home very efficient. With Mitsubishi's Zone Comfort Hyper Heating System, you no longer need separate heating and cooling systems. Contact Davis Brothers Heating and Air Conditioning, Indiana. A Mitsubishi Diamond Preferred Contractor, PA License Number 2526. The engineering firm of Young & Associates is proud to sponsor high school athletics. With offices in Indiana, Catanning, and Johnstown, Young & Associates is a full-service engineering, surveying, and design firm for private, public, and municipal entities, covering Western Pennsylvania, delivering solutions in a timely and cost-competitive manner. To see how they can be of service to you, go online to youngandassociates.com. want to say thank you to State Representative Jim Struzzi, supportive of our broadcast, but working with me very closely on a bill that he introduced as we fight against the NFHS National uh, Network, leveling the playing field for local broadcasters, the Fair Play Broadcasting Act that uh, we've been working on both statewide and nationally. And uh, we thank State Rep Struzzi for... Uh, his support, and all of the many legislators that have signed on to that bill. The punt is taken by Cooper Rother, who returns it to midfield, and the Marauders, after a 35-yard punt, will have half the distance of the field to go for another touchdown. Nice job by Caleb Palmer downfield. Nice clean tackle on the open field. What a shame. I, I mean, it's uh, it's the way the game's played. You get a, you get some breaks, you take advantage of them. A lot of these games swing, as we said, Mark, two or three plays sometimes when you have the evenly matched teams. I think the Wildcats gave a good account of themselves, just unable to finish. A, a score, who knows, but they just weren't able to do that. Well, Coach Page, I'll get back to it after this play. Pistol back, and Kesey Wetter hands it off to Cooper Rother, and Cooper. Uh, Cooper, I should say, to the 46-yard line of Homer Center. Cats. Justin Walbeck, yet another tackle. Wow. But Can't Coach Page told me on the pregame show, we can't turn it over. In the past, when we have, they pounced on them. Well, they pounced. Cooper Rother yeah. sort of pounced yeah. on that uh, uh, strip fumble that returned it, and he returned it 77 yards. Yeah, they've had two strips here tonight, uh, an interception that wasn't, and then, of course, that play. You know, we've been critical of officials a couple games here tonight. This crew has done an outstanding yeah, yeah, job tonight. Yeah, this game's tonight. moved very well. 
Second down and six, and Cooper Rother dragged down from behind defensively. Romulos Dokos in there, and Romulos, we hope your dad's watching. Yeah, that's a in nice Greece. play. Great play. Penetrate, make the tackle. Can't loss do of more a couple. Than that. Three yards actually on the loss. They spotted at the 49, right in that HC logo. And again, Mookie Wilson, Ed Sutter, and the grounds crew, they've had their hands full this year with eight home games. I think they've kept the field in great shape. First thing Rich DeLeo from uh, an Altoona radio station, I've been friends with him for a number of years, said to me, oh, I love the fact they put the hash marks and the yard markers on the field. He goes, well <laughs> done. First thing he said as he walked into the booth tonight. Thank you, guys. Third down and nine and rolling and throwing on the run and pass is caught by Cooper Rother. Boy, they use him in so many ways. He's such an effective tool. And on third down and nine, again, the Wildcats Patrick can't get off Riley the field and the, the Marauders, Riley, the reception for the they Marauders. needed, uh, they needed nine, first they first got down. 10. Easy winner again, right on the line. And it couldn't have been any tighter. For Riley the that was? Oh, that was Riley, no, no. I'm sorry, 18 on the far side but of the, the field. Again, another bullet type pass right on the numbers. Kesey Wetter does have quite the arm, doesn't he? Yep. And the give to Cooper Rother, and Rother bangs his way for a couple. Riley Clevenger in there uh, defensively for Homer Center. Rother on the carry, Clevenger. Yeah, the first, uh, before they went into the locker room before the game started, he was out here at the very end of that warm up session and he was throwing 40 yard passes to a guy in the far end zone and then moving around and planting himself and throwing, so he kind of loosened up that way. His um, brother was the quarterback last year, and um, he's more of a threat throwing the ball. Nothing against you, Connor, wherever you may be. <laughs> Second down and eight. And Cooper Rother in motion, jet sweep. They hand it off to him, and Riley Clevenger has him. Bell has Rother him, and guess who? Area. Justin Walbeck has him. Clevenger, and, and Mason Bell. Riley Clevenger's really Wildcats. developed into a nice football yeah, player. Yeah, he's this had a good year. Progressed. He'll be back next year. It's going to be third down and about six to go. He plays the right way, doesn't he? Central and Bedford tied up 14 apiece. Oh. This is actually the uh, first round of the state playoffs in Class A. 21-7, Juniata Valley in the fourth quarter, leading Portage. Portage joins the Heritage Conference next season. Richland, 35. Forest Hills, nothing in the fourth quarter. Bedford, 54-12 over Clearfield. Ouch. That's a good one. Third that down at six, and Kesey Wetter looking, looking, dancing around, throwing off his back foot, caught again. And another first down. Kiesewetter this time it is Cooper Rother to the... 18-yard line, they needed uh, six, got seven. And he's right on the muck, and those guys shook loose. He, that pattern broke down because of the rush, but he was still able to get it out there, and, and Rother shook Craig, or Michael Krajosik and got open. A score and an extra point puts this game into the mercy roll. They're at the Wildcat 28-yard line as we look out of our s and Bank broadcast booth. Relationship banking, one customer at a time. Very honored this year, Ward. We were honored by the Pennsylvania Association of Broadcasters. Best play-by-play -play sports coverage. Got that award just a week or so ago. And Kisa Wetter He's is dragged Kisa down from behind by Riley Clevenger again. Back to the 30, or, oh, I'm sorry, Landon Hill. Eight, not two. Number eight on the far side of the field. Still scrapping. Defense school, still scrapping. School board there. approved a new scoreboard I last saw that. night. So I that'll saw be that. uh, heard that on the radio this morning. Looking at a new press box, Ward Hilliard Lounge. Yeah, I'm Sweet. sure that'll not happen. But uh, <laughs> hey, Chris Garitano, right to our right, too, the public address announcer. Good this job year. He's this done year. A great huh? job, Chris. Great job That's this year. That's that past media experience <laughs> that he has with him. We've enjoyed working with Chris and some of his students all season long. Zachary Vogt, our camera operator tonight. And the Kesey Wetter dragged down He's again. Let's see who there. has them. That might be Romulos. It is Romulo Stokos, who's up for the Wild got looking, some time yeah, and looked good. Playing well out here. Romulo could be a big part of this team next year. Yeah, you know, they, that's the thing. There are some key members coming back next year. It's going to be a solid group, the Wildcats. They should not have to have uh, Guilfoyle in their way if uh, 
what I look at is right yeah. with the transfer rule. They've mm-hmm. had six transfers the last two seasons. That moves them up a class automatically. We'll see the what PIAA happens. PIAA rule. We'll see if that applies to the privates. I'm pretty sure it does. Third down and 10. Kesey Wetter deep drop. Right. Great protection. Mm-hmm. Fires over the middle. Intercepted. Nope. Knocked away. Fine play by Riley Clevenger again. There he is. <laughs> and another pass break up for Clevenger. He's approaching 20 for the season. I'll tell you what, he. Uh, I've mentioned it about a couple of other kids watching them grow up right in front of our eyes as we are 12 games deep into this season. Yeah, it's been a long We've year. We've called a lot of games the last few years. You know that? Yeah, we've it's been, been fortunate. Fun. Fourth been down fortunate. from the 28. 641 to play. Devin Bryant has an excellent leg. He kicked a 42-yarder against Purchase Line, but this is natural surface, a little bit soft. It would be about a 45-yarder. It looks like they're going to go for it, but they're going to have to call timeout as the play clock is down to one second. Timeout, Bishop Guilfoy, Indiana Regional Medical Center playoff. Sports night coverage continues from Memorial Field in Homer City with the score Guilfoy 28, Homer Center nothing on the WCCS Wildcat Football Network. Summer is over and thoughts turn to fall and winter. Creville Supply is your source for heating supplies. Creville Supply stocks anthracite and soft coal, as well as wood pellets and split firewood. You can buy it bagged or in bulk. Creville Supply also has salt and driveway stone for potholes and muddy areas. Bring your own truck or have it delivered. Call Creville Supply in Penn Run at 724-254-0403. Hi, my name is Billy, and this is the bus that I take to school every day. It's a Smith bus. We have a really fun bus driver. And guess what? Smith Bus Company is hiring new drivers. That's right, Billy. Smith Bus Company is hiring. They are going to go for it. They empty the backfield. We never uh, did answer that question I had you chew on. You've been no, chewing and chewing and chewing on no Homer idea. Center's season opener. Hey, First time they'll Syracuse. ever play this team. No, it's not Syracuse. <laughs> Kisa Witter, all kind oh, of way time. Too much. Throws over the middle, caught, and it's Cooper Rother at the 15-yard line, and he's upended at the 11 for another first down. Wildcats just can't get off the field on these third and fourth downs. The Wildcats, a little bit of a trick question. Their season opener next year against a team they've never faced before. Rich Turk, you know the answer? Okay. United, United Valley. United Valley, yeah, that's okay. Mm-hmm. Co-op with uh, United and Black Lake Valley. Typical I got you. Question. got you again, didn't Typical I? Typical one of your questions. That's what it takes to stump me, though. There's little tricky ones. Well, actually, it doesn't take much at all. (laughs) Hey, speaking of Justin Walbeck, we had a text in the booth. Ward Hilliard, you should remember the football player his grandfather, Ed Blackie Ondo, was. Yeah, I know. He was in my class, Blackie. Give to Rother. Rother met at the 10-yard line, and they try pushing him back, and they do. Noah Henry, among others. Colin Troop, Mason Bell. Yep. Under six oh, minutes Henry, to play in the football bad. game. Like Blackie was a little heavier, but he was fast, and he could he would hit. <laughs> so think he'd be proud of that young man Speaking out there Speaking of tonight. United Valley, you know, they're going to split home games. They're going to play some at United, yeah, some at Nanaglo. We're not sure where we'll be come late August. Well, we'll It'll be warmer. I'm sure we'll find. Yeah, definitely we'll be warmer. <laughs> No, they play Fridays now. Yeah, our spotter in the booth, Dennis Mester, his first mistake of the night. He thought they still played first on Saturday. First of the year, I think. He first never of the, makes, yeah, that's what I meant. Never first of the year. Mistakes. Sidecar to the left of Kesey Wetter is Abraham. Kesey oh, Wetter, they're bad a hold. Yeah, up, they finally and they go. fire for the end zone. It's actually caught at the five and taken in by Kesey Bishop Wetter Guilfoyle's Vincent Shafari, but it's going to come back. We're going to watch this on our video replay monitor. You're going to see a big drag down. And... Mason Bell came on the blitz. He got his money's worth, did the BG lineman. And uh, that was Anthony Edwards, a senior. And the touchdown is wiped off the board. Ten-yard penalty. Yeah, Kesey Wetter, way too much time back there. But, again, you know, Hummer's concerned with coverage as well. And he's such a good passer. Bishop Guilfoyle looking to defend last year's District 6 championship over uh, Homer Center. They're going to go for a three-peat again. They also won the title in 2019 over Juniata Valley. Looks like that's going to be a rematch next weekend at Mansion Park. 
They also won three in a row from 2014 to 16. They were a sure bet to win a fourth straight and win another state championship, 59-game winning streak, but Homer Center had other Homer, thoughts. Homer came in, didn't make too many mistakes that night. Second down and long. Kesey Wetter spikes it, basically, as he had pressure coming Kesey up the middle pass. and threw he it at the Abraham. feet of uh, the intended receiver, David Ball Abraham. Nice job down. by Noah Henry. Stayed right with Abraham in the flat. Went nowhere to go with that. I want to thank our huh? digital producer behind us, John Smathers. Oh my, Unbelievable yes. work all season long, traveling with Indiana. Had him many games with Homer Center. Uh, this is fabulous. John, you like your little tarp tonight? We have you protected there. <laughs> I thought we were going to sea there for a minute. We had a sail up here. Well, as you know how many times that door gets open tonight <laughs> yes, with I the do. cold night. And it, that's, that's very effective. They can pick up a first down at the two. They have a third down and 25 at the 27-yard line. Pressure coming, throwing. Kisa Wetter, and it's dropped by Bishop Guilfoyle's Vincent Shafari, who was the old classic, and I think we'll see it on our video replay in the monitor. He was looking ahead to where he was going before he hauled the ball in, and pressure coming off the edge from Landon Hill. And Kesey Wetter unloaded, and that's what happened. He just didn't haul it didn't in. Haul in. Mason Bell right coming up on him hard, though, so he may have heard the footsteps. So fourth and 25 for Bishop Guilfoyle. Play clock is down to 10 seconds. They are in no hurry uh, to get a playoff. They're going to take a timeout. We'll take one with them with five minutes and four seconds left in the football game. Only one score in the second half belonging to the Marauders off of a strip fumble. 77-yard return from Cooper Rother. It's 28-0 Guilfoyle on an Indiana Regional Medical Center playoff sports night right here on the WCCS Renda Digital. Founded in 1954, the Grayston Coral Sportsman's Club has been a hit for young and old. Dues are only $15 and include fishing and use of the rifle range. The Grayston Coral Sportsman's Club prides itself in events for kids, including Kids Fishing Day. The annual John Matrisic Singles Pool Tournament will be held coming up Saturday, November 20th. DJ Brian Supko will spin your favorites Thanksgiving Eve starting at 8. And the club's banquet and dance hall is available for weddings and special occasions. The Grayston Coral Sportsman's Club, Neil Road, Grayston. Proud to make tonight's video stream possible for the Homer Center community. Every day, businesses open with a determination to make this day better than yesterday. Families work to create a better life. Communities come together to provide better opportunities. At First Commonwealth, we're proud to be part of this journey to a better tomorrow, to provide resources that help businesses succeed, to inspire families to save for a brighter financial future, to help support our communities and keep them strong, and be better together every day. Last week, that was the long against the Red Dragons, and the snap is put down. The kick is up, and the kick is short. It is no good. We're going to have a media timeout on the field with five minutes left in the football game. It's Bishop Guilfoyle 28 and the Homer Center Wildcats nothing on an IRMC playoff sports night on the WCCS Wildcat football. The Homer City American Legion Post 493 is proud to sponsor today's broadcast of the Homer Center Wildcats. The American Legion is proud to be a supporter of our community and amateur athletics. As you enjoy games at Memorial Field in Homer City, remember it was built over 70 years ago as a lasting remembrance of the brave men and women who have proudly served and sacrificed for our great nation. Good luck, Wildcats, from American Legion Post 493 in Homer City. tires soon then go to firstclassmobiletire.com and put in the make and model of your vehicle then shop tires and set up a time that is best for you now just sit back and relax while first class mobile tire comes to your home or office while you sit on the couch get some stuff done around the house or continue your workday routine first class mobile tire will come to you with a convenient and top-notch professional tire service Schedule a time that's best for you at firstclassmobiletire.com. Seamless access to the main IRMC campus, IRMC in Indiana. Count on IRMC at Chestnut Ridge, Old Route 22 in Blairsville. Enough with the waiting game. Get in, get out, get better. A part of the IRMC family. Better health, better life. Anthony rolling at quarterback with Justin Wallback as the blocker. Watch for Anthony take off. And they 
hand it to Walbeck, and Walbeck is thrown down by Anthony Shafari. And they'll lose yardage back to the 40 or to the 18 yard line as we start to look ahead to next year. Across the front line, Homer Center will have back Isaiah Bentz, center Aiden Bikina, right guard Vinny Taglietti, Michael Yunt, and Sage Bernard will graduate. Cole McAnally, the quarterback, will be back. Landon Hill should be something special oh, next yes. year. Uh, he'll be back as a running back. Receivers Michael Krajosik and Austin Zenizak will be back. 422 is left in this football game, and Roland going to keep it, and Roland tripped up for another loss back inside the 15-yard line. And for the Marauders, Vincent Shafari, Vincent Shafari being announced by Chris Garitano, so we'll Austin go with that. Three, third down and 15. They weren't duped at all, were they? They pretty much had, a, had that scouted out. They knew Anthony was going to tuck it in, so yeah, let's they see. stuck with him. Yeah, Shafari came in, good low tackle, and down he went. Good crowd on hand tonight with the temperatures, Ward. Much that, better than last I, week. I'd say, you know, overall, Homer's probably had the better of the play, but one big play hurt him. And they're trying to the half. middle. Yep. Yep. And uh, other than that, uh, they're just unable to finish. They hand it off up the middle. And I'll be honest with you, the wall back on the carry. Wall back on the carry. The Wildcats are going to have to send out the punt team. And uh, fourth down and long for the Wildcats. Going to wind this thing down toward the three-minute mark, 28-0. Disappointing night for Homer Center. They were hoping and expecting for you know much more. Yeah, uh, and as I said, uh, they've been very competitive. It, this isn't what I consider a blowout. I just think that they had some breakdowns that Guilfoyle did not, and that's the name of the game. Greg Page will join us in the booth on our post-game show, as he always does, and calling for a fair catch. Guilfoyle at for the 40-yard line was... Fair caught by Ryan Hay. Ryan Haig, Hag actually, on the fair catch. So at the 39-yard line First is where Gil Foyle will take over. From the Wildcat 39-yard line. So that wasn't a very productive drive, was it? Uh, that was uh, <laughs> that was one of the worst, really, of this half. But some backups in there. So Gil Foyle at the Wildcat 39-yard line. The Wildcats subbing uh, a number of guys. We'll see if we can pick some of these. As it uh, always is, we're a lot of fun working with you this year and oh, all the guys, our, Denny, Jerry. Great year, great year. I, was, year. I saw some great play, and um, it's really encouraging, as you said, here for the squad next year. And let's see, is that Kesey Wetter still in there or a new quarterback, it appears? On the carry, it was Chase Kissel, a freshman 6'1", 180. Keeps the you got to love Riley Clevenger, yeah, don't you? He was in on that. He got up hopping around. He is still playing the game. He is energetic. Always so polite, too. Yeah, he's Every time I see him, he comes up, Mr. Burdick, and uh, yeah. He plays it the right way, and uh, boy. Early think... on at camp, he said, tell Coach Page, I should be the quarterback. I should be the <laughs> running back. I should be the receiver. Next year, I think he will be a part of the offense. I think so. Second Six down and eight to go from the Wildcat 37. And Kissel, the freshman Q, in there for the purple and white clad Marauders. And they hand it off this time with the football. It is Caden Wyant. On the carry for the Marauders. Sure, if that would be a brother of the kicker, I would think it might be. A sophomore 5'10", 192. Hill, among others, in on the stop for the Wildcats. We have a Marauder purple jacket up Caden here. The, few yards, third down I don't think four. he's hearing me, though. The uh, Wyants, are they? Yep, yeah, he's not hearing me. Third down and five to go. Caden Wyant. The Wyants are brothers. Okay, we just confirmed that. And Kissel takes the shotgun snap and drag Kissel down. And on the tackle, on the Vinny stop. Taglietti for Homer Center. No Defensively for the Wildcats, Bence Taglietti we return on the D line. Yunt and Noah Henry will graduate. Outside backer Landon Hills back. Big loss in the middle. Justin Walbeck, how do you replace oh, him? He's going to be hard. Mason Bell will be back. Middle linebacker Riley Clevenger will return. Michael Krajosik in the secondary. Roland and Troop will graduate. Fourth down. We're under a minute to play in this football game. Our first Commonwealth Bank postgame show will include radio replays and a visit with head coach Rick Faust and 
We'll recap what's been another well, don't be Rick outstanding. Files, or, uh, did I say Rick Files? <laughs> Straight page. Boy, I'm going back in time. Timeout called by Guilfoyle. Hey, speaking of Faust, Eric Faust had another great season at Chippensburg, although they got eliminated last weekend. Greg Page will join us on our first Commonwealth Bank postgame show. Timeout, Guilfoyle. We're going to keep it right here in our S&T Bank broadcast booth from the gridiron to the classroom. S&T Bank has you covered and tell you that the team at IRMC at Chestnut Ridge and Blairsville's Urgent Care, they will fast track you for quick access to their team of medical experts, highly trained and ready to treat all minor injuries and illnesses. IRMC at Chestnut Ridge offers the full spectrum of Urgent Care seven days a week from 8 to 8. Old Route 22 in Blairsville, where you can get in, get out, get better. A part of the IRMC family. Better health, better life. Wonderful partner, IRMC, and IRMC at Chestnut Ridge, among the many, many sponsors that make our radio and video streams possible. Without them, fans, we aren't able to do what we do. And when you get to this level with the broadcast rights fees, we again want to thank the Grayston Coral Sportsman's Club, the Club Savoy Sons of Italy, and the Homer City Area Athletic Booster Club for helping to underwrite the costs of the video production, which so many fans, as you heard tonight, if you've been with us from the beginning, so many states represented That's following great. this game tonight, That's not to mention around the region. Fourth down, Kissel the quarterback, and they have a motion man, and they run a jet sweep near side, and Ryan Hag with the football as a flag flies. He's forced out of bounds by Homer Center's Hagen Jackson Arone, and we'll see... Usually when the flag Zach is there, Rouser, it's coming the back. There's a flag on the Zach Rouser in the game. Joe Cicciarelli also in the ball game. Kissel, uh, boy, he uh, has good size, a freshman quarterback. He, uh, they list him at 6'1". He looks taller. It's going to be a hold on the uh, Marauders. Holding on and now Gilfoyle. looks like they might send out the punt team. So Guilfoyle scored early off of a turnover. And then... In the second half, when Homer Center was driving, a beautiful play by Cooper Rother, who stripped the ball after a first down pass reception to uh, Michael Krajosic. He stripped it from him, and the ball hop, popped in the air, and he streaked uh, up the left sideline for a touchdown, 77 yards, to really dishearten Homer Center. Ward. Oh, absolutely. The Wildcats were driving. Well, as I said, I thought the Homer had the better this second half, but they just weren't able to finish and made some mistakes that you can't do. Uh, we talked about it. You, you can't have penalties and you can't have turnovers in a game like this, and Gil Homer Quill had them both. Going to advance to the District 6 championship for the eighth time in the past nine seasons. I want to say hello to Jimmy Sutter tonight, Jimmy, if you're still yes, with us. Suds. Snap from center, new punter in there, or is that still Bryant? I think it's Bryant. And the kick at the 20 yard line, it hits and gonna roll out of bounds. Nope, gonna actually roll dead at about the 13. And maybe one snap of the football is Bryant, assistant Bryant, coach as we look down. Colin Troop, line. if you can, well, Colin Troop hugging Joe Izzy, assistant coach. Or was that, uh, actually, I think that's Nick Raymond. Just yeah. congratulating Colin, not the way he wanted his career to end tonight. For uh, Colin, rushing the football tonight, 11 carries, 45 yards, 65 yards for Landon Hill to lead the attack. So we're going to take over Homer Center Will at the f f seven. Uh, what is that? The 13 yard. Yes, mark. 13. Good Lord, Willing Ward will be back with our fans uh, next year at United Valley, either in Nanny Glow or Armagh. Somewhere up the or road. Is it Armagh? Somewhere up the road. Up the road, down the road, right? <laughs> yeah. I down suppose. the road, not. The, it'll be here before you know it. It's yeah, amazing the way yeah, that. It's a long year for these kids, but what a great year! I mean, they could have been 11 and 0 very easily. This team. Uh, it it a couple of one point losses. See what happened to Muncie last week, by the yeah. way. No, I did not. Canton beat them 45 to nothing in wow. the playoffs. That's in that same North uh, Tier League, uh, and Canton was undefeated. Handoff up the middle. A lot of new faces in there. Riley Clevenger, good for him. Riley gets that carry. I Clevenger think he'll be a part of the offense next year. He's going to be fun to watch. This team's going to be fun to watch next year. No two ways about it. Angelo Alexander, quarterback, a freshman in there, takes the direct snap, hands it off, and here comes Riley to the 15, and he's going to fight to get to the 18-yard line, and the game 
is going to come to an end, and it's going to be a rematch from 2019. It's going to be the Bishop Guilfoyle Marauders and Juniata Valley Hornets as the teams will line up, and uh, the Marauders come to Memorial Field, and for the first time in school history, the Wildcats lose a home playoff game, and they do it against maybe not the strongest BG well, definitely not the strongest no, BG but it's team we've good seen, but is. they are a darn good football team. And they're going to go for another district title next week at the yard that they are accustomed to playing in, Mansion Park in Altoona, against the Juniata Valley Hornets. And the Hornets have 12 players from Williams, Williamsburg. Right, that's that not going to be a roster. walkover game. If you're thinking that, don't, because Juniata is for real. And, and uh, judging from the way Homer played, I, I think they're going to give this team a, a go for it. Our Videographer, video cameraman upstairs above us, Zachary Vogt, will probably move down and join us for the Coach Page interview, unless Coach Files does surprise me and show up. <laughs> but it will be Greg Page on the first Commonwealth Bank postgame show. Final score here tonight. Disappointing night for the Wildcats, but they celebrate another outstanding season as they returned and showed themselves very well in the playoffs once again. Sometimes you start in the single-A playoffs. In certain years, you second round, you're advanced to the 5A playoffs, and you come up short. 28 nothing to the Bishop Guilfoyle Marauders, and you've been listening to it right here on the WCCS Wildcat Football Network. Want to buy a new or pre-owned vehicle? Want to sell your current vehicle? At Luther Ford, you can do it all. Check out the great Luther Ford inventory and drive off today. Or order the exact vehicle you want. Have a trade? Luther Ford will give you a check for your vehicle's high trade-in value. If you want to just sell your current vehicle, Luther Ford can pay you thousands over KBB. At Luther Ford, you can do it all. Luther Ford, Route 119, Homer City. The Smith, Lewis, Chess and Company are certified public accountants that provide close personal attention to their clients with every client relationship viewed as a partnership. You will receive assurance from the Smith, Lewis, Chess and Company that their credibility comes from years of advanced training, technical experience and financial expertise. The Smith, Lewis, Chess and Company is located on 1776 Warren Road, Indiana, a company built on character, integrity and with a belief in strong relationships. Building or remodeling? Save yourself some steps and march to PenningtonSpecialty.com. Randy George at Pennington Specialty takes pride in every job, and you'll see that when you march into PenningtonSpecialty.com. Contact Randy George at Pennington Specialty for a free quote. If you're talking construction of any kind, you should be talking to Randy George at Pennington Specialty. One visit to PenningtonSpecialty.com, and you'll see why people have been marching to Pennington Specialty for years. Randy George is also a grad of Homer Center and is Wildcat proud and wishes the team the best of luck on their march to a district championship. Founded in 1954, the Grayston Coral Sportsman's Club has been a hit for young and old. Dues are only $15 and include fishing and use of the rifle range. The Grayston Coral Sportsman's Club prides itself in events for kids, including Kids Fishing Day. The annual John Matrisic Singles Pool Tournament will be held coming up Saturday, November 20th. DJ Brian Supko will spin your favorites Thanksgiving Eve starting at 8. And the club's banquet and dance hall is available for weddings and special occasions. ...to the booth in our first Commonwealth Bank postgame show. And for the eighth time in nine seasons, the Guilfoyle Marauders are going to play for a District 6 championship. They've won seven district titles through the years, two in Class A in 1985 and 87, which one of them was over United, and four in single A in 2014, 15, 16, and then 19, and last year over Homer Center in the title game. The seven overall titles ties Bishop Carroll and Homer Center, of course, uh, leads the Heritage Conference with uh, uh, four District 6 championships, but uh, couldn't get back to the title game this year. And again, the team wearing white and purple standing in their way in this semifinal matchup as the Wildcats lose their first home playoff game. Let's recap it for you. Homer Center's second possession, Landon Hill fumbled the football. It was recovered by Carson Kesewetter. 
And uh, it was returned for a touchdown, but a block in the back uh, called, uh, called that touchdown back. So Guilfoyle then started at the 21-yard line. They got a 12-yard run to the 9-yard line of Homer Center. And then on first and goal from the 9, Carson Kiesewetter called his own called number, his own again, number and again and provided, provided the game's, provided the first, game's score. first score. Kesey Wetter going to keep it again, bouncing it outside, and I think he has a clean trip to that right pylon for a touchdown. Carson Kesey Wetter from nine yards out on first and goal, his 15th rushing touchdown, and the Marauders lead six to nothing with six and a half minutes to play in the first quarter. They do indeed capitalize on the Wildcat turnover, and this time, no penalties. Devin Bryant provided the extra point to make it 7-0 almost halfway through the first quarter. Wildcats picked up a couple of first downs on their next drive, but then had to punt it away, a short 23-yard Krajosic punt. Guilfoyle started at the 41-yard line. They had to overcome second and 15. They were behind the chains a few times tonight or had third and fourth and longs and uh, completed passes. This time, two passes to Cooper Rother. Took the football to Homer Center's 44-yard line, and Carson Kiesewetter did it this time with his legs again on a uh, long touchdown run. From the Wildcat, 44. Motion man is Rother again right toward us if you're viewing it. And the give up the middle. And, no, it's Kiesewetter keeping it down the right sideline to the 30 to the 20. Makes a move, gets by a defender, 10-5 touchdown. Carson Kiesewetter from 44 right yards out. Excellent he is in ball fake. And he scores again his second of the night from 44 yards. And it's 13-0 Marauders with 61 seconds left in the first quarter. Not real good tackling for Homer Center there either. It wasn't, but uh, Kesey Wetter took it in, and it was 14 to nothing after Bryant's extra point. Wildcats late in the first started to drive at their own 26-yard line, headed to the second quarter. They moved it into Guilfoyle territory, marched at 14 plays, 63 yards, used six minutes and 20 seconds, picked up five first downs, but guess what? They couldn't finish, could they, Ward Hilliard? They stalled at the nine-yard line. That was a killer. Uh, if you get, make it 14-7, we have a football game, and then I think Homer played them pretty even after that, but uh, it was unfortunate that they gave up that third score more. So at the 634 mark, Guilfoyle starting at their own nine, 18-yard pass to Rother, took the football to the 50. A 30-yard pass to Yanishak took the football to the 20-yard line. They worked it down inside the 10, had a second down in goal from the seven-yard line this time. The talented quarterback, who's only a junior, he'll be back next year, which is bad news for BG opponents. Carson Kiesewetter did it with his right arm and not his legs, and he found one of his favorite targets. Favorite targets. Kesey Wetter throwing slant in pattern, caught touchdown. That was easy. Rother on the reception. His third touchdown reception of the season. And he was open on a slant in. And it's 20 to nothing, Guilfoyle with 18 seconds left here in the first half. Devin Bryant added his third extra point. He's just about automatic, Bryant is. It was 21 to nothing at the half. Bishop Guilfoyle out gaining Homer Center 184. To 131. So we headed to the second half. Guilfoyle uh, received the second half kickoff, but a three and out is what Homer Center needed. Well, there was actually one first down and then three plays and a 41 yard Bryant punt. 28 yard Michael Krajosic return set Homer Center up at their own 46, but three and out. And BG then uh, got the ball back, had to punt it to Homer Center. Wildcats had a Pretty good looking drive going, trailing 21 to nothing. It started at their own 16 yard line. Hill with a lot of the yards on that drive. And uh, pass interference helped out too. Roland was interfered uh, down with, at about the five yard line, took the football to the Bishop Guilfoyle 31. Again, Homer Center a chance to at least make things interesting, but kind of a unique play, a sensational play by Cooper Rother. The old strip of the ball <laughs> trick. And, uh, yeah, they had Michael Krajewski in the flat. He was fighting for yards as usual. That's when en- that will happen. And uh, I think it was Rother that stripped it away from him yep. and off he went the other way. And it was 11 was plays, the ball game. 61 yards uh, that Homer Center had driven the ball, picked up three first downs, including a first down on this play that ended up going the wrong direction. Here's what it sounded like on WCCS Radio. CS Radio. Wide side of the field toward the bench of uh, Guilfoyle. The pass goes out that way to Krajosic at the 26. Little 
Stutter step moving. He has it stripped away from him and streaking up the left sideline to the 50, to the 40, to the 20, to the 15, to the 10. Who has that football? I, I haven't Kirsten spotted winner. that number yet, but it's a touchdown. It might be Cooper Rother who took it about 75 yards. We'll get it officially on the replay. It is Cooper Rother. Returns the ball for a touchdown. And he, here's Kurjosic with the pass reception. He takes it to the 23-yard line, and Rother comes up with the ball and returns it 77 yards officially. Yep, and that was the final dagger, yeah, was it just, not? That uh, just kills you. Uh, you're driving, you're going down, you're you're counting on scoring, and I thought Homer had the momentum to do that. But uh, you get a play like that, it just takes all the air out of you, and that's Made what happened. 28 to nothing after Devin Bryant's fourth extra point. He attempted a 45-yard field goal that uh, was short tonight. His long was 46, and that came last week against Purchase Line. But Guilfoyle... Tosses the shutout at Homer Center tonight. They're going to face Juniata Valley in the championship game next weekend at Mansion Park. Greg Page should be joining us on our first Commonwealth Bank postgame show. He will join us next, or Ward will rejoin you with the stats when we return. 28-0 Guilfoyle. They're now 8-4 on the season. The Wildcats close out their 2021 campaign at 8-4. Coming back with more from our broadcast booth at Memorial Field in Homer City after this on the WCCS Run to Digital TV Wildcat Football. Building or remodeling? Save yourself some steps and march to PenningtonSpecialty.com. Randy George at Pennington Specialty takes pride in every job, and you'll see that when you march into PenningtonSpecialty.com. Contact Randy George at Pennington Specialty for a free quote. If you're talking construction of any kind, you should be talking to Randy George at Pennington Specialty. One visit to PenningtonSpecialty.com, and you'll see why people have been marching to Pennington Specialty for years. Randy George is also a grad of Homer Center and is Wildcat proud and wishes the team the best of luck on their march to a district championship. Founded in 1954, the Grayston Coral Sportsman's Club has been a hit for young and old. Dues are only $15 and include fishing and use of the rifle range. The Grayston Coral Sportsman's Club prides itself in events for kids, including Kids Fishing Day. The annual John Matrisic Singles Pool Tournament will be held coming up Saturday, November 20th. DJ Brian Supko will spin your favorites Thanksgiving Eve starting at 8. And the club's banquet and dance hall is available for weddings and special occasions. The Grayston Coral Sportsman's Club, Neil Road, Grayston. Proud to make tonight's video stream possible for the Homer Center community. Hi Wildcat fans, this is Coach Greg Page. I would like to thank Wildcat Nation for your support, and I especially want to thank the Homer City Area Athletic Booster Club for making tonight's video presentation possible. The Bears Midget Program has provided a foundation for Wildcat football for decades. Through the growth of the boosters, they now impact many of our sports here at Homer Center. From our team, we say thank you Homer City Area Athletic Booster Club for making a big difference in our community since 1958. With the holidays rapidly approaching, it's time to come home to Indiana's premier jeweler of over 100 years, Luxembourg. This year, add sparkle and smiles to the lives of those you love. Jeff and Kip have packed both stores with a myriad of new and different gifts of all descriptions. Make your holidays sparkle with gifts from Luxembourg. You'll be glad you did. Shop either convenient location, the Indiana Mall, or on Philadelphia Street in the heart of downtown Indiana. Luxembourg's Jewelers. I'm Kip Ray. I'm Jeff Whittison. We are Indiana's Jewelers. Thank you very much for your great work back at the studio. John Smathers, our digital producer, as we join you on the video stream as well once again. And Ward Hilliard has the statistics that shaped up this 28 to nothing Bishop Guilfoyle victory. Uh, Cooper Rother for Bishop Guilfoyle, 16 carries, 62 yards. Kesey Weather or Wetter had uh, 12 carries for 75 yards and two rushing touchdowns. Through the air, Kesey Weather was... 10 of 16, 127 yards and a touchdown. Total of 48 offensive plays for Bishop Guilfoyle, 269 yards. Not a bad defensive effort uh, by Homer Center. That's not a whole lot of yardage, but the big plays, they just kill them. 
Colin Troop for Homer Center. 11 carries, 45 yards, ending a stellar career. Great senior season for him. Landon Hill had 16 carries, 65 yards. We're going to get to enjoy him again next year. Cole McAnally had five carries for 12 yards. Uh, Justin Walbeck finished with uh, three carries for minus three. I'm sure he'd like to forget that part of it. Uh, and uh, Michael Krajosik had two carries for 15 yards. Homer rushed 39 times, 130 yards, a respectable amount. Through the year, 6 of 13 for McAnally for just 44 yards. Homer had 52 plays. 174 offensive yards against Guilfoyle, but just unable to score, and I think that was the big difference. Mark. They just were not able to get into the ball game. Well, you mentioned uh, Troops 45 yards. That's a good uh, I mean, I'm, he wanted to be have a bigger total tonight, but the 45 rounds him out, if that's accurate, from our award-winning statistician Jerry Ross. Be right. Got his own Fourth, that uh, gives him a round number, 1,200 yards rushing uh, great, this year. Great so that's year. A, that's a great good uh, number for Colin Troop. I enjoyed watching him, and uh, it's, he had a great career. Well, look who arrived, Rick Fowl. I don't know. I <laughs> slipped a tongue earlier, Coach. I said Rick Fowles will be joining us. But it's Greg Page. He is back in the booth. We'll talk to him for a final time when our first Commonwealth Bank postgame show continues after this on the first Commonwealth Bank postgame show from Memorial Field, 28 to nothing. The Bishop Guilfoyle Marauders advance to the championship game for the eighth time in nine years. They'll face Juniata Valley. Coach Page up next on the WCCS Renda Digital TV Football Network. Dan in a van hasn't returned your call? Chuck in a truck can't get there for two months? Stop dealing with fly-by-nighters and call a company that's fully capable for all your plumbing and heating needs. Joyce Plumbing, Heating, and Air Conditioning Incorporated. Joyce Plumbing, Heating, and Air Conditioning Incorporated is on call 24-7, 365 days a year. Visit us at JoycePlumbing.com. That's JoycePlumbing.com. Joyce Plumbing, Heating, and Air Conditioning Incorporated. The best place in town to take a leak. PA 042115. The C. Frederick Bouncer Funeral Home and Cremation Services is proud to be a community partner in tonight's game. For over 100 years in Western Pennsylvania and since 1968 in Homer City, satisfaction is their top priority and your needs will come first. The new modern funeral home opened in 2004 and is spacious with a beautiful entrance and new carpeting. Large visitation rooms, a chapel, family conference space, children's lounge and more. Proud to serve the greater Homer Center community, the C. Frederick Bouncer Funeral Home and Cremation Services in Homer City. At IRMC, we have all of the necessary pieces in place to perform complex operations, including highly skilled and specially trained surgeons, their support team of experts, and advanced technology like the Da Vinci Robotic Surgical System. As a result, patients spend less time in the hospital, recover faster, and get treated close to home. So there's no reason to puzzle over where you should get your surgical care. The answer is right here at IRMC. I'm Shannon Lipniscus. Hutton Blues Insurance of Indiana is proud to support high school football. I'm Jay Blues. You can't beat football season. And when it comes to your insurance needs, you won't beat the service we provide at Hutton Blues Insurance. Our family business has served Indiana and the surrounding counties for more than three decades. Once you do business with Hutton Blues Insurance, we'll make you a customer for life. So best of luck area teams from your friends at Hutton Blues Insurance in Indiana soon? Then go to firstclassmobiletire.com and put in the make and model of your vehicle. Then shop tires and set up a time that is best for you. Now just sit back and relax while First Class Mobile Tire comes to your home or office. While you sit on the couch, get some stuff done around the house, or continue your workday routine, First Class Mobile Tire will come to you with a convenient and top-notch professional tire service. Schedule a time that's best for you at firstclassmobiletire.com. Kick off game day with the flavor and nutrients of dairy. Be sure to include three servings in your lineup. Milk is packed with vitamins and nutrients and helps you score big in a healthy way. Fuel your body with milk. A message from the Allied Milk Producers. Rugby requires a lot of different skills. I'm shoving 800 pounds and then I have to sprint to make a tackle. When we win, we get milk. And it really helps in recovery. It's always part of our celebration. It's something that we rally behind. Back with you at a chilly memorial field. Wildcats lose their first ever home playoff game to the Bishop Guilfoyle Marauders 28 to nothing. Coach Page 
joining us on our post-game show. And, Coach, first of all, we always appreciate you making the climb, not the way anyone uh, wearing black and white and following the black and white wanted things to go tonight uh, as you come up short against the Marauders, 28 to nothing in this semifinal matchup. And, you know, we talked on the pregame show. You said when they've beaten you, um, they've been able to pounce on turnovers. And that's the first thing I'll bring up because on your second possession, a rare fumble from Landon Hill, and uh, the touchdown was called back, but it didn't matter. Carson Kesewetter, two plays, had it in the end zone, and they seized the opportunity, didn't they? They did. They did. That's hard. Um, you know, we, we, we got the ball back there a second time, and – um, it's just tough, you know. It's it's just a kid, you know. Our backs ran so hard all year. It's just a kid trying to continue to make a play, and it got punched out. And credit to them, they had a couple different situations where they were going for the ball, and and it worked out for them. And I give them credit. I mean, they were they were the better football team tonight. Um, you can't give them short fields like we did a couple times, and then they had a turnover. They take back to the house for the only score of the second half, I think. Right. So. Our kids battled. I mean, you know, it's an uphill battle, um, first of all, when you get down, but secondly, when you don't always take care of the football. Yeah, and the other thing you've talked about, you know, a few on a few occasions this season, if there's been a disappointment with the offense, it's been the inability to finish drives. And you had a couple of opportunities, one to climb back in 14-7 to seven at one point, but you come up short at the nine-yard line, and then they promptly march it. Uh, you know, it's the one time they did march it, on a long field, 91 yards, when you stalled at their nine-yard line. That was a 14-play, 63-yard drive that took over six minutes, kind of trademark Homer Center football yeah. with five first downs, but you're unable to finish. And then the second half, you had another opportunity. And uh, you could have made things interesting, but could have, would have, didn't, right? Yeah, the first one, I, I, I take responsibility. They saw us in third and long and really went to a really went to a 3-2 with, with uh, outside linebackers and then, um, you know, four coverage over the top. So they had guys on the perimeter, and we tried to come back with the jet, which was very successful the first time, and that put us in a hole for fourth down, and we just they cover well. Uh, we just didn't have anybody open. And, you know, you to be able to get something there in 14-7, uh, you know, it's a different ball game. And, and maybe then again, if we don't leave them uh, get in before the end of the half, that's a credit to them. They – they shift a guy out, and he just runs a simple slant route. I mean, those are things that we have to we have to be able to be better at. Um, so they had timely touchdowns, which I think was something that um, I always say we can't let them do. They really didn't pound the ball down the field on us uh, like they've been able to do in past years, but this was just timely touchdowns, and we just couldn't recover. No, you couldn't, and uh, it's unfortunate. You heard me as you came up to the booth uh, before we brought you on to the set. Um, Landon, or I'm sorry, Colin Troop, 45 yards rushing tonight, round number of 1,200. He, one of your seniors that will graduate, that's always tough on you, isn't it? And I don't know what you said to the group after the team, but it was a pretty special season overall again here at Homer Center. I think so. That's one of the things I told the whole group. I said, um, you know, if you'd have told me to sign on a dotted line for 8-4 and four back in the midsummer with some of the a lot of the question marks we had and losing the caliber of play, players we had in some areas last year, I would have taken it. Um, our seniors really rose things up um, starting with the, you know, early in the summer. And it was just, I told them, I said, this isn't blowing smoke. I said, it was so much fun to go to practice every day. Zero issues. I think we had one grade issue early on uh, from an underclassman. That was tremendous. Uh, the attitude, um, you know, you told the seniors what you wanted. They filtered it down. They took care of it. Every day was a joy to come to practice. I love practice to begin with. I'm sure players don't agree with that because it's just there's a lot of drudgery there. But I'm very proud of them. I said we were the last team in, in, our, in our conference, our county, uh, still standing again. Uh, it's a reflection on our program. I'm proud of that. If you look at midfield, there were three guys standing. But now they're going to sit on the HC logo. I think that's pretty special. Uh, I know it's through the glass, Zach, but can you get a shot of, yeah. of those three players outside? One of them is the senior, uh, Colin Troop, with his back. Is that on? Uh, I can't see the monitor. That's, uh, Troop, Hill, and Colin, Clevenger. Uh, yeah, Colin Troop and Landon Hill, who will be back next year, only going to be a junior, and Riley Clevenger. Uh, just curious what's going on. It's, uh, I'm sure they're reflecting and disappointed. But also, 
I think when they look back, those three and your other young men will celebrate a, a season. And you, I, I thought Riley Clevenger, by the way, had an outstanding football game. I agree with you. Yeah, you got three guys right there. We have many of them, but you have three guys that pour their heart and soul into this. And um, I was fortunate to be able to, to speak to each senior individually, either right near the end of the game or after our our team huddle. Um, they're all they're all special to me and to our staff in in their own ways. I mean, just really good, solid kids. Like I said, we had three of them that battled injuries. Um, one of them didn't play last year, Noah, because of his ACL. Justin worked so hard, Justin Walbeck, to get back from December to July with an ACL surgery. Sage Bernard went through some uh, hip surgeries and has battled his shoulder, uh, you know, as well. And and you got guys like Anthony Rowland who really. Um, who really stepped up as far as becoming a two-way starter. Troopy, I said, the man from nowhere. I said people didn't even know who he was until maybe the second half of the year last year, and then he elevates his game behind our outstanding line to get 1,200 yards. Um, Michael Yunt, three-year starter, um, just you know, they lived it. You know, those guys lived it. And then two of my favorite guys that weren't starters, but Isaac Turk and Bobo Orsargas are just tremendous people. I mean – I think that's the, 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 the personality of those seniors. And, um, you know, those are guys there. You could just – I'm going to swear here for a second, but you could bitch at them um, any day of the week about, about things, and they never came back at you. They took it – they, you know, they took it internally, and then they got better, you know, that sort of thing. Well, that's what you want is those three guys. Maybe they're waiting for you to <laughs> – they're going to be your bodyguards walking yeah, well, up Wildcat Alley. Yeah. Maybe, right, they'll, maybe they'll carry me up the way I feel. <laughs> yeah, Bishop Guilfoyle is going to look for another three-peat. They had a three-peat in 13 – or, I'm sorry, 14, 15, and 16. You won it in 13. And a bookend. They had a 59-game winning streak. You bookended them with a championship in 2017 as well. But they're yeah. going back to another championship for the eighth time in – nine years we talked a couple of times uh, certainly a lot of respect for coach wheeler and bishop guilfoyle they play by the rules that the piaa sets i don't agree with those rules and how private schools are treated i we're we're both catholic too i mentioned wards catholic so we certainly acknowledge that a uh, catholic education or a private school education is good sometimes i wish we had a catholic high school in indiana county but we don't um uh, from that standpoint, from an educational standpoint. But I have to ask you, because I read Matt Felisic's comments last weekend, a little bit of frustration. Is it frustrating when public schools continually in all sports, basketball's probably even worse, to be honest about it, run into these roadblocks and public schools are blocked? It is frustrating. I'm not going to lie. I, I, I'm friends with Justin. I think he acknowledged the same thing. And, and um, you're right. They're, they're not doing anything illegal. I mean, um, you know, they, they have their program to a point now where kids, I mean, if, if kids and families want to choose that option, um, they're, they're rolling so good that kids are doing that. Families are doing that. And that's, that's, a, that's a given right to them. Uh, certainly, you know, it's tough. I mean, we talked before the game, me and Coach, and, you know, it's like, Sometimes you just sometimes it's tough because you have to deal with what you have and um, but I'm proud. I told our kids earlier in the week and I I told uh, Justin too before the game. I said we're one of those places. We're not we're not afraid to go play them. We're, we've had we've had a little bit of success against them. They've had a little bit more against us. I mean, but I think they respect us because they know that you know I'm not going to go tout that stuff during the week. I don't I don't have time for that and I. Um, Quite frankly, I don't think that – I mean, I know it's a talking piece. I, I get that. But, you know, we have to take every advantage of every moment we have to get prepared for them. Um, let's not take away from the fact that he's got he's a good coach with a good staff and his kids work really hard, and ours do too. Um, and our kids, they want challenges like that. So, yeah, it's tough. I mean, I, I know what everybody says, and I get that. Um, and it's frustrating. It'd be um, if they weren't in our division, maybe we have a couple more <laughs> that we would have won. I hope, but they are. And so you know, you go play them and you prepare. Am I right? Next year they won't be. No, oh, I don't know that. I mean, I'm not. I'm not sure about that. There's um, a yeah, PNWA transfer rule that I thought I was reading. Uh, <coughs> they might have to move up with six transfers, three, two years in a row. But maybe. Well, it's it's that. the new formula that was introduced. I think is success and transfer. So, um, I don't know. I mean, they're not going to stop. <laughs> they're not going to stop playing and stop trying to to win. So, I mean, I you know, and I I, I wish a lot of their guys 
through the line there. I wish them I wish them good luck. I mean, you know, they're kids. Uh, their kids working hard, and Justin and his staff work hard too. Yes, they do, and you do too. We're very proud uh, to follow Homer Center football. You wouldn't believe uh, we had a scroll John had on the screen. If you're watching here and there, let us know where you're at. Coach, we had so many states that were sending emails uh, into our sports box and Facebook posts. Incredible tonight. Wildcat Nation was out there strong, came up a little bit short. We uh, thank you so much for your cooperation. It's been a lot of fun. You know, these uh, 11, 12, 13, 14 game uh, seasons have been tremendous. Let's get back at it next year. But we'll give you a, a little bit of time off. And I also want to take the opportunity to wish you and your family and your entire Wildcat football family the happiest of Thanksgivings. Well, I appreciate that. I mean, I, I know I can speak for the rest of our coaches. Um, I have a tremendously understanding wife. Um, who, who doesn't get enough credit? My daughters, I mean, they know I live and breathe this stuff, and you know, it's 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 hard sometimes. You can't you can't always be there for every little thing if you have things going on with practice. But I want to tell you one thing: you talk about the people from all the states and the countries. This this is a special place for football right here. It truly is. It's it's just an honor for all of us to be part of it. It's people that are related to our kids. Um, our coaches have so many con connections with so many of these people, whether it's former teammates or people they know. Um, I'm involved in that, too. We all get so many texts each week wishing us good luck. It's truly a special place to coach, and I try to impart that to our kids all the time. I, I really believe that. Um, I, that's not an arrogant statement. I just think it's, I think it's the truth. Coach, thanks for everything you've done with me this year, and uh, uh, good Lord willing, we'll be back at it before you know it. I'll, I'll be excited to go through another round of it next year. I appreciate what you guys do, too. I really do. Happy, Thank you very much. Happy Thanksgiving. Thanks. Thanks the same to all of you guys, too. We appreciate Coach Page joining us on our first Commonwealth Bank postgame show. We'll bring Ward Hilliard back in here for a final time before we say good night and goodbye for the entire 2021 season. We started with 86 degrees back on August 27th when Cambria Heights came here. And i um, going to close it out. Temperature's in the 20s, but that's the joy of playing in November. It's been an honor, and we're, um, we're going to say goodbye for a final time here. Uh, it's been a lot of fun, again, right in front of us. You can't see him on uh. camera, but John Smathers, the work he did, and uh, all of our uh, crew Jerry Ross, our statistician, Dennis Mester, our spotter, Zach Vogt has done many of our games as our main cameraman, cameraman and uh, Michael Burdig, our executive producer back at the WCCS studios, and our fine sponsors. It's been a fabulous year one more time. Uh, it's a privilege from, from my perspective, Mark. I appreciate the opportunity you give me to do this every year. I, I just love Homer football. I love Homer basketball, as you well know. And it, it's 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 a program you just have to be proud of. And I, and I want this year's no different. Uh, it, it's a great community supporting these programs the way they do. And uh, you know, I, it, it's just really nice to be a part of it. And I am. Very appreciative of it, believe me. All right, good working with you all the way back to 1994 wow. when the Wildcats, we did that Mansion <laughs> yeah, Park I do District remember that, Championship yes. game, 3 nothing over Bellwood Annis. And here we are all these years later, and before you know it, we'll be going to where? Uh, wherever United you, Valley. United Valley plays, uh, we'll, we'll, okay. be we'll be there. We'll be there. On a raft, maybe. <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> all right, for our entire broadcast team, thank you, everybody, for your support of our radio broadcasts and our video streams we can't say thank you enough eight and four the wildcats finish the marauders will advance to the d6 championship game against juniata valley next weekend we wish both of those teams the best of luck somebody's going to win and move on into the final four the way the uh, state bracket this was a state playoff game tonight yeah. and the wildcats uh drop it to bishop guilfoyle by a final score of 28 to nothing from all of us if you're watching us to all of you happy thanksgiving, happy thanksgiving. everybody from memorial field in homer city where bishop guilfoyle ends homer center season 28 to nothing until we talk to you next august good night everybody